all the same reasons that I've been doing for the last five years is just uh, <clears throat> trying to get people to wake up to libertarianism, to, to liberty, to freedom. And that's very rare up in Canada as it is in the U.S. And so uh, just looking at Ron Paul and how he affected uh, the, how many people are aware of libertarianism and are actually really into it now um, was enough almost to make me decide to try to do this angle, to get involved in the really dirty, seedy <clears throat> political system and uh, and just see what happens. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens. So the first thing that comes to my mind, Jeff, is the last time we spoke to you on Free Talk Live, we were talking about uh, Acapulco. We were talking about I was entertaining moving down there. And, uh, and now you're – I'm – assuming that there's some sort of residency requirement to hold uh, political power in Canada? Yeah, that's right. Um, I had to look into it. So I, I am a Canadian citizen still, so I uh, I can run under that. But you have to also be a resident. And this was a very tough decision for me to make personally because I've been a non-resident of Canada for about 10 years now, which means I don't have to pay any income tax in Canada. And because of where I am a resident of, I don't have to pay any income tax there. So I've had a very enjoyable life of not having to pay income tax for the last 10 years. Uh, but to run uh, as a candidate, you have to be resident. And so I'm thinking of just uh, saying I'm a resident uh, of the month of the election, and if I don't get elected, then I'll immediately revert back to non-resident, uh, so I don't have to get involved in that tax system up there. And if I do win, which uh, uh, is possible, but I, I don't know how likely it is. I've never done anything like this before. You always run do... that risk when you put your name on the ballot, <laughs> as Ron Paul said. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of a scary sort of thought to me if I do win. If I do win, I'll have to just figure out what I want to do from there because there'll be a lot involved in terms of my own personal life uh, I, if I have to even still remain a resident. I don't even know if that's the case, but I'm not even thinking that far ahead. The election's in October, and I'm just going to spread the message of liberty across Canada as much as possible until then. So you're going to basically do it from Acapulco? I'm looking at your video feed right now, and I can see over your right shoulder the beautiful Acapulco Bay, uh, the sun you know, shining down. It looks, it looks, it looks wonderful. Yeah, and it is wonderful, and it's not just the weather. It's a lot more free down here, and that's why I have left Canada uh, and live mostly in Mexico for a number of years now. And so I sort of am posing this as a little bit of uh, Canada's uh, boy coming back home to try to free the people who he left because it was so unfree he couldn't handle it. <laughs> and uh, and that's sort of what my stance is, is uh, if people ask me during this campaign, uh, why don't you even live in Canada, I'll be like, well, it's, it's horrible here. The government is oppressed and uh, just involved in every aspect of your life. But I'm going to try to come back and try to see if I can help you guys uh, deslave yourselves somewhat uh, via this system. So uh, that's sort of the general take I have on it right now. I'm definitely going to have to go up to Canada a couple times in the next few months. So we're even planning a cross-Canada Liberty Tour, bus or train tour, uh, with people like Walter Block and uh, Tim Moan, the Libertarian Party of Canada leader. And we're hoping to get people like Wendy McElroy involved and Dan Dix and... Uh, a number of other uh, well-known libertarians in Canada. Well, uh, that's the time to be in Canada, I'll tell you, in the summer. It's beautiful. <laughs> what, um, yeah. what convinced you? I mean, was it somebody who got a hold of you? And, Jeff, we need you to run for – and what are you running for, anyway? <laughs> It's uh, called the Member of Parliament, or MP. MP it's, yeah. it, it's essentially the same as a congressman, uh, from what I can tell. How there's many about are there? 300 of them. There's over 300. So there's that's a, a much higher level of representation for Canadian citizens. There are 435 drunken sailors in the U.S. House of Representatives, and uh, that's a t for a population that's 10 times as large. I guess you have 300 MPs. How many are, is it bicameral, or is there just one ha lawmaking? Uh, I have no idea how any of it works. I've never looked into it. I, I don't care. Uh, but I, of course, I'm going to have to look into it now. But I've never, ever cared what they did. I've always seen it as being evil. I still do see it as e being evil. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to look into how all this stuff works. I didn't really go to school in Canada either. I, I didn't like the public government indoctrination camps, so I just stayed home. So I didn't get all this information drilled into my head. Yeah, I can I can just see the campaign slogan now. It's like, I don't know how this thing works, but it's not working well. <laughs> Let me well, ask you this, Jeff. Facebook, I, I put a thing on my Facebook page just asking for people to make up some funny memes, and uh, someone did one. I think it said something like, uh, vote, for, vote for Jeff. Uh, he'll do nothing, and he'll leave you alone. I thought that was a pretty good one. That That is a pretty good one. Are you going to release your birth certificate, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I can find it. Uh, I, I think you can tell by my accent and all the photos 
photos of me at four years old playing hockey in the Siberia of Canada. That's I'm pro probably from there, and <laughs> I'm definitely not from Kenya, though. I'll say that much. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, the <laughs> so what um, did somebody get a hold of you and, and get you to do this? What 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 made you do it? It was a number of things that actually happened live on air on my podcast on Anarchast, which is on the Liberty Radio Network, that uh, I was talking to Walter Block, and he convinced me that all of us libertarians should run for government. Uh, so right then, it got me thinking. And then I had a good friend of yours, Daryl Perry, on uh, about how he's running for president in the U.S., and he, for an hour, really eloquently said all the reasons why this makes total sense for us to do, and there's really no negative reasons not to do it. So it was after that that I was pretty convinced, and I've already known the Libertarian Party of Canada quite well. I've had uh, the current uh, leader on Anarchast before. He's an anarcho-capitalist, Tim Mohn. Uh, the prior leader was Katie Chown. She's also an anarcho-capitalist. And even the person who formed the uh, Libertarian Party of Canada in the 60s is Sieg Pede. He's uh, an anarcho-capitalist, and he was even down here at Anarchopoco. So in a way, it's oh. almost the anarcho-capitalist uh, party of Canada. I met Sieg. Will you explain uh, to our audience, uh, now this is uh, Free Talk Live's on dozens of radio stations tonight all across the United States. Many of them are on, you know, just at your average FCC licensed radio stations out there. They probably don't know what this term anarcho-capitalist is and what it means to you. Yeah, I, I use that word sometimes instead of anarchist because some people think anarchist isn't what it, is, it means either. Uh, here's my definitions very briefly. Anarchist, to me, I just look at the roots of the word. An is without. Archist is ruler. So it means you don't want to be ruled by anybody. Uh, I don't know why some people want to be violently ruled by someone else, but I don't want to be, so that's why I'm an anarchist. I use the term anarcho-capitalist because sometimes people equate anarchy with communism because there's a fair amount of people who call themselves anarcho-communists, uh, and those those are the people that you see in the hoodies and balaclavas, in riots, breaking windows and lighting things on fire. So I don't want people to think that's what I'm about either, and I'm definitely not about that. And I actually don't think they're really anarchists. I think they're just communists. Uh, so I use that term. The, these words, uh, anarchist to me, anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist, libertarian, they're all interchangeable words. Uh, because to me, libertarian means your number one principle is freedom and liberty. And of course, an anarchist, that is exactly your number one principle. Hey, I heard a rumor that you can cure anarcho ar an blah, 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 that you can cure anarcho communism uh, by ha having a, a large shoe collection. Is that true? <laughs> I <does> mean, <laughs> it's a reference to Anarchist. <laughs> You'll just have to go watch the show, ladies and gentlemen. Where can folks find Anarchist? Oh, I, I actually forgot about that episode. Yeah, now I get, now I get the joke. No, no one got the joke, even me, and I host the show. So, uh, yeah, you can find that on uh, YouTube, Anarchast. Uh, just look it up, or Anarchast.com, or on the on the, uh, Liberty Radio Network. There you go. Find him at Anarchast. Find Jeff Berwick at Anarchast.com. Jeff, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, guys. Peace. Indeed. Eight fifty-five. You just cut fifty your... free. I'd cut the wrong mic. 855-450-3733. Free talk live. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, yeah. like yeah, Google Cassandra AdWords, Fairbanks where a consumer goes looking for widgets and... near them, and you try to pull them in with and your I ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, um, where you push your message out about your so great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets out. at all that no, what I they need in their life right the now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge, at marketfreetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. Now. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450 free. It's amazing how close we come to not even doing a show sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear t- who turned off the mics? Who turned on the mics? No idea what's going on around here. <laughs> you know, hopefully uh, things will be better by the time we uh, we get to Freedom Fest. I'm going to Freedom Fest this year. I hope we can uh, bring the whole show. We'll see whether that occurs or not. It's freedomfest.com. What this is is the largest gathering of free minds in the world. This is the largest libertarian event going on anywhere. And this year, I think, is going to be the biggest one yet. They've got a debate going on, what they're calling the historic dream debate of the century. They certainly aren't uh, parsing any words there, are they? Um, It's a debate between Paul Krugman and Steve Moore. Steve Moore is the Wall Street Journal columnist and chief economist for the Heritage Foundation. And Paul Krugman is the Nobel Prize winning economist and the New York Times column economist and uh, New York Times columnist. They're going to be debating austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax. And it's only at Freedom Fest. This is a big deal. And that, you know, that very event dwarfs all the other amazing folks that are going to be there, like Peter Thiel and Congressman Alan West, Grover Norquist, Glenn Beck, George Gilder, Senator Mike Lee, John Mackey, Steve Forbes, the Dinesh D'Souza. It's a, it's a star-studded list, and you can be involved simply by going to freedomfest.com. If you sign up at freedomfest.com, please click that you heard it on the radio. That way we get credit for it. That's sort of important to us. We'd love to go out there, and if they find us to be valuable, maybe they'll bring us out. We'd love that. Um, it, that's freedomfest.com, or you can call them and register. Their number is very similar to our call-in line. It's 855-850-FREE. 855-850-FREE. It, too, is uh, a toll-free line. 
you can call in here and talk to us at 855 free <laughs> And actually, you could use Skype now that our uh, special guest, Jeff Berwick, is uh, vacated it. Our username is lrn.fm. Just uh, send us a user request if you haven't done that already, and you can call in live. And you, usually you sound better on Skype. If you guys uh, heard his interview just in the last segment, he sounded great. He's got a nice setup. So, you know, in some cases you get this laptop and it's far away or whatever, and that won't work out. But nonetheless, L our username is lrn.fm and the uh, telephone number, the old-fashioned way, toll-free is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Glenn calling in from Philadelphia. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live. Oh, hello, gentlemen. What? You mean our, our, our aspiring legislator is no longer there? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I I felt like we had everything covered. Yeah, Jeff Berwick's gone. Uh, well, I was just going to inform, inform him that the uh, the legislative body to which he aspires to being a member is uh, the, is a uh, bicameral legislature. Is it's it? got a House of Commons with about 308 members and a Senate um, with about 105 senators. Um, it's a wholly owned subsidiary of the United Kingdom and uh, the Queen. Um, it, uh, I was going to point out to him that, uh, you know, as uh, Alex Jones had touted quite a lot a few years ago, that in 2011, um, you know, the Queen's Governor General uh, dissolved the Parliament for the third time in three years. If they if they, uh, they twitch and they do anything that the Queen likes, she just has her Governor General shut the thing down. Which is what Has happened. Has that happened? When, okay. Uh, oh, that, it, back in 2011, I'm looking at a, an article here that says that uh, she she closed it down. The Governor General David Johnson approved Prime Minister Stephen Harper's request to dissolve Parliament, Parliament on March 26, 2011, if for the third time in three years. The move came after Parliament's first ever vote of no confidence against Stephen Harper. So basically, if they twitch any way the Queen doesn't like, she shuts them down. Wow. Well, and and you can yeah. bet that she's not going to like it if Jeff Berwick's in there. <laughs> yeah, well, I I don't think Jeff Berwick is getting involved in the uh, the the House of Commons for the purpose of actually changing the system from the inside. That's not what I heard yeah. of him. Oh yeah, that's, that, that, I'm sure he's going to have, have a profound effect if they can be sure. <laughs> they can't, <even laughs> can't even stay in business if they say anything the Queen doesn't like. Let me ask they, you they, um, this about their Senate. Um, you, ours, the, the Senate here in the United States had at one point a purpose, and that purpose was to represent the state governments of each state, um, you know, in a body that sort of, uh, you know, would give uh, equal amount of representation to each state, whether it's populous or large or whatever the reason was. Um, that reason for existence has been essentially cut in half because now the senators are uh, elected basically popularly by the people rather than being appointed by the state government. So I wonder to myself many times why we even have a, you know, a, a Senate at all. I mean, wouldn't it just be much more efficient to shut down that other side? I'm not, I'm not big on efficient governments. Agreed. Efficient but, legislative yeah, bodies do terrible things. I'm big on efficiency yeah, generally. Well, well, since we're confronted by a myriad of lesser of two evils choices, you know, like well, you know, which is worth it. So they're there so they can so they can earn money and get pork you know, get pork barrel projects for their districts and such. That's exactly know? what they're there and, for. And, and information for inside trading. Other than that, I'm not sure what they do. Yeah, it's uh, but, it's a difficult thing. Glenn, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. You want to hang on? Hang on. One other yep. thing. Go ahead. Um, he, uh, well, can talk about we're here in the U.S. He's he's confronted with the uh, lesser two evil choices between Canada and the narco terrorist state of Mexico. Like, uh, you know, Acapulco might be nice, but I often like to say that there are, like, three Mexicos. There's your, you know, your suey hole Mexico City, which is one of the world's most popular, one of the world's most populous cities, if not the most, you know, that's just an, and the nightmare Mexico like, all around the border, and all those people are fleeing. Americans, you know, like your friend, go down there, or Jesse, um, or whatever, the, the wrestler guy, the Minnesota governor. Is true? Um, Tur Ventura goes down there and surfs and tells how nice Mexico is. You know, yeah, maybe in, it can be okay in some like the touristy areas. And then, then there's like um, the you know inner inner Mexico, you know, like uh, Guadalajara and stuff like that, um, where, where there's actually some something left of a Mexican uh, indigenous culture in the, you know the inner areas. But I mean, um, 
quick, the, the, the people were forming their own militias to help try to fight the drug battle there. So it's like, I personally wouldn't give Mexico one tourist dollar because, you know, I, I think it's kind of lamentable when Americans who have enough discretionary income to go down there and live reasonably high in the hog and safely, you know, tout it as being nice when it's so, such a suey hole in so many other ways. In well, so many other I don't think you can punish a whole right. country for, um, I was just That's down there for the, in, in Arcapulco, and I've got to say that my experience was that it was entirely safe, both in Mexico City and um, Acapulco. Um, now, obviously, I can't speak to other places that I have not been. Well, I've only been to a few places in Mexico, uh, Cancun and, and uh, you know, the other two that I listed there. But... I mean, these are individuals. It's not like I gave the Mexican government right. much of anything. If I if I could carry my gun down there, I'd have gone down there. I can't carry my gun down there, so I ain't going there. Right, and you know, and I'm sure, and I'm certain I didn't paint the whole. That's why I was careful not to paint the whole country with a broad brush. Down in in the central, you know, central down in like well, right, you still have these like little American enclaves where people who were, were quite, retire with like a, a steel mill pension would live in a ranch house here, and you have you know go down there and have their own dentists and doctors and commu- you know gated communities and stuff too. Yep. There you like go, this. Glenn. Thanks right. for the call. Take care, guys. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You see a problem with going to Mexico? Eight fifty five four fifty free. Free talk live. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason, Jason, Going once, twice. Okay, we got to move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the hosts you're listening to right now, online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with a host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. 
because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks, why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. The number is, and it's toll free, 8 855-450 855-450 free. You can call in and talk about whatever you want here on Free Talk Live. You can change the subject. People are always saying, I apologize for changing the subject. You don't need to apologize for changing the subject here on Free Talk Live. We do something different than what other talk show hosts do. They bring up a subject that they think is important. They they assure you that they're experts at this whole talk radio thing, and they, uh, you know, they if you don't call in on that subject and you don't have an opinion that they want to hear, you won't get on the line. They'd rather just monologue it. Here on Free Talk Live, you can call in about anything. We'll talk to you about it. The more you talk, the less we have to, so please do give us a call. And I think that that makes, uh, that, that's an indication of superior broadcast skill. If I can talk to you about whatever it is you bring up, then I'm doing better. Now, there's a lot of things I'm not very good at. Um, for instance, I was uh, looking at my Facebook page a couple of days ago, and there was a really big deal with Deflate Gate. I guess... Uh, the the fellow that throws the football for the New England Patriots, Brady. Yeah. Um, he got in trouble for his role in the footballs not having quite sixteen pounds of air or something. I'm not. I've right. seen quite a few headlines about this. I've heard politicians talking about it, and I'm like, this is utterly useless information. Yep. Um, I'm. I'm going to maintain a bit of rational ignorance on what's going on in the NFL's football inflation scandals you can however call in and talk about that if that's what you'd like to do 855 450 free here on free talk live so um this interesting story that came locally here uh, cantwell and it is uh, from the from the, the sentinel source.com that's the keen sentinel i believe it's the oldest newspaper in new hampshire or america or something it's an old paper been around since the 1700s and I guess there's a gal that isn't standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, well, I hope they executed her. And they, you know, there's this is a big deal right now. Like, uh, I guess a lot of young people are doing uh, flag stomps to show their uh, dissatisfaction with the flag, and that's getting a lot of people upset. I saw a great meme about that. Somebody said, uh, if, if you don't like people stomping on flags, and then it uh, cuts to the next picture, and it's like in North Korea, and it's like moved to a country with mandatory flag worship. <laughs> And uh, so, I mean, people are sort of whipped up about the flag right now. Um, and I get where some people are coming from on this. I, you know, I used to be a big flag fan myself. I've come to the, a different conclusion that I had previously. My conclusion is, and I'm interested to hear yours, my conclusion is is that this, uh, this young girl should shoot the flag with a 12-gauge and then set it on fire. I see. I don't think that there's any value to it. I think that uh, it usually, if you do something to the flag, you get attention, but you get attention for the act that you get that you've ever you've done to the flag, and nobody really listens to what it is that you've had to say. Yeah, it was kind of a waste of ammo. Now that you mention it, <laughs> um, my opinion is, however, that the flag, whatever reverence one has for the flag and for the sacrifices that people have made for the flag and all these things. I don't think that people make sacrifices for flags. They say they do. Well, they they make sacrifices for, you know, government propaganda, and then they die meaninglessly. That's kind of the point that I'm trying to make here. Oh, is sorry. Is that, um, you know, like the, the pledge to the flag specifically mentions the republic to which it stands. That republic is a is code word for the government of the United States. The government of the United States is populated with a bunch of people that we would normally call liars and thieves. 
because we call them politicians. It's really synonymous with that term. If right. you talk to Americans, the functional the functional um, use of the term politician is basically liar or thief. That's what they mean when they say it, and it doesn't take long to talk to them about that. Right, and it's and it's amazing how uh, you go from the guy who is the liar and the thief to the guy who fires the gun on his behalf, and somehow there's this magical transformation of character. Right, so there is, there are brave individuals who have given their life life for lives that individuals who has given individuals who have given their lives okay for the flag. But they've given it so that politicians can do their work. And by work, I mean lying and thieving. Uh, they hide behind the flag. They use it as a uh, as, as protection, as a screen for their actions. And the, the reverence for the flag really just gives them screen for their actions. It, it causes young men and women to sacrifice themselves for these politicians and their goals. And you really got to kind of wonder how w problems would have worked themselves out in the past had people not sacrificed themselves. Now, everybody always goes back to World War II. That's the good war. But if you eliminate that and you look, sort of look at what would have been like if people wouldn't have been forced to sacrifice themselves or sacrifice themselves for the Korean War, the um, uh, you know Vietnam and Desert Shield and Desert Storm and you know the litany, the Iraq invasion, the Afghanistan invasion, uh, you know wherever else the United States, wherever else service men and women have died, you got to kind of wonder because the politicians aren't offering themselves up. Barack Obama hasn't said that he's willing to fight the leader of ISIS with short swords in some kind of arena in Istanbul. Oh, and you thought Mayweather Pacquiao was interesting. I would love to see that. Right. I would pay for that. Now, that would be, as far as I'm concerned, a brave thing to do. And that man deserves to display the flag. Um, you know, like, yes, you deserve all of that red, white, and blue there, Barack Obama. If you're going over and saying, you know, I'll I'll fight the leader of ISIS with uh, short swords. And I let him have shields, too. That's fine by me. Uh, or, you know, give him gladiator outfits. I don't care. I, I don't care if you uh, put uh, resin and broken glass on their hands. Whatever <laughs> you want to do. Whatever crazy thing. I mean, um, yeah. What, like, what is the point in more bloodshed over there? I mean, if you haven't, if we haven't figured out that whatever occurred in Iraq caused whatever is occurring in Iraq now, I, I, you, you know, like, Japan. I don't have a problem with anybody who wants to go over there and kill ISIS, by the way. They're more than welcome to go do that. I think that those are really terrible people who probably ought to get killed. It's just unfortunate that this was, you know, so incredibly predictable as to have been predicted by every non-interventionist foreign policy advocate said, hey, this is exactly what's going to happen. And they were like, no, we're going to have total victory. And then we were like, no, see it happen. And then they're like, well, let's go do it again. And that's an unfortunate pattern of behavior. You know, if these people want to get in themselves into endless wards, you know, by all means, I can understand why, uh, you know, somebody might uh, like to do that. Maybe they're suicidal. Maybe they're just a psychopath. Maybe they're masochist, status, whatever. But, uh, you know, you probably shouldn't be able to tax me to go pay for your war, stupid. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I don't see the point. You're not going to get the total victory that was uh, that was achieved in World War II with the, uh, you know, the defeated enemy just laying down their arms and that kind of thing. You're talking about a culture here. You can't defeat a culture. Uh, I mean, at that point, all you can do is nuke it to glass, and at that point, you're the evil one. And the best bet, stay the heck out of these people's business. They won't come over here and bother us if we don't bother them. I don't know if that's entirely true either. It's just I just don't think that governments are terribly effective at preventing that. Do you think that you, you think that governments are people that want to take over governments over there? You think ISIS is going to come over here? I wouldn't be surprised that some religious fanatic from a foreign country came over here and blew up a building. This would not shock me in the slightest, right? Like, that's something that sounds entirely plausible to me. Yeah, I, I, And I'm a total conspiracy theorist, by the way, right? <laughs> like, I do not believe what the government's telling me about 9-11 or any number of things. But the, the, I, the notion that some religious fanatic would come over here and kill people because of some, you know, religious or, uh, you know, political difference, that seems perfect plausible to me. I just don't think that the United States government has the capacity to go over and stop every religious zealot who ever existed. I just, uh, I'm of the opinion that most of the fighting that goes on is sort of fighting for what they perceive as good reason. 
And, you know, people tend not to give their lives for what they perceive to be bad reasoning. And there's very few people, you know, invading Switzerland, for instance, um, and, you know, bothering them because Switzerland wants nothing to do with your problems. And if the United States took that position, they would probably lose some stature on a worldwide scale, right? Like they'd no longer be the policemen of the world. They'd no longer be able to sort of export arms and uh, force of arms and these sorts of things. They'd have to figure out a different thing to do, but they look remarkably in many ways like the bully on um, on the corner these days. They sir do. No question about that. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-free. Free Talk Live. Warning. If you've recently declared bankruptcy, you're going to want to change the station. Because there's an alternative to bankruptcy, and it's faster than you'd ever think possible. But if you've already declared bankruptcy and have missed this opportunity, you'll want to change the station now. Here it is. Right now, the company that has resolved more credit card debt than anyone in the U.S. is available to settle your debt, too. You may reduce your debt with one low monthly program payment. If you call right now, Freedom Debt Relief will show you how low your monthly program payment could be for free. Call now. 1-800-399-1993. That's 1-800-399-1993. If you're struggling with debt, this could be your answer. And the bigger your debt, the more money you could save. To find out for free how much of your hard-earned money Freedom Debt Relief could help you save, call now. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. 1-800-399-1993. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge at marketfreetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. 855-450 free. If you want to get some Bitcoins, the best thing to do is to go to ExpressCoin.com. They've got all kinds of cryptocurrencies over there, not just Bitcoins. They've got Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Dashcoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are, from what I can tell, the very best place to get Bitcoins. They're a licensed money services business, so they're on the up and up. And you can do it whether you're in Canada or the United States with a check or a money order. You just start out at ExpressCoin.com. They um, they have a very low markup. And frankly, they don't require a whole bunch of information like so many of these uh, uh if you're trying to do an exchange and you want to get money out, you're going to have to send them your driver's license and God knows what else. Um, I don't know about you, but that makes me nervous. Expresscoin.com. You can get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee at all at Express Co- by using coupon code FTL at Expresscoin.com. It's Expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. So uh, we kind of riffed on, uh, you know, barely even got to this story. I just sort of talked about it from SentinelSource.com. A Monadnock region uh, middle school student, and this is this is where we are. There is Mount Monadnock, the most hiked mountain in, I think, North America here in our backyard. I can see it when I drive to work. And it's a very nice site. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, I've hiked it a few, quite a few times, and uh, that's why what it's called here in the region. Uh, a student and her mother are seeking a public apology from a teacher they say unfairly punished and humiliated the eighth grader for exercising her right to sit during the Pledge of Allegiance. Interim Superintendent Keith whatever said school officials have dealt with the situation and won't be discussing it publicly any further. Fatima M. Smart, 14, of Swansea, uh, that's the town, by the way, my son was born in, said in, a, in an interview last week that her, um, that to her, saying the pledge means a person is showing respect for the uh, nation's government, she doesn't like the government, and what it's been doing, which is why she's chosen to sit during the pledge, she said. I'm okay with the country, not the government, noting that she doesn't have a specific gripe, but rather dislikes a lot of things about it. She said during the pledge in other classes this uh, she sat during the pledge in other classes this school year and no one uh, called her out on it and until the first day of cooking class in mid March when she said the teacher the class teacher um, uh, mentioned to her to stand up motioned motioned to her to stand up during the salute I shook my head nope <clears throat> once the pledge was over Fatima said uh, the teacher told her I'm not using names here because I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, the, the student clearly is taking a strong stand, so I don't mind mentioning her name. The teacher's, you know, why does it matter? Right? I want to know the teacher's name. All right. Mer- uh, Mercier, maybe? I don't know. Told her it wasn't okay to sit during the salute and that uh, Mercier's father was in the military and Fatima's actions were disrespectful. I hope I hope people go find this woman's Facebook page and give her a hard time. <laughs> well, I think that it's been taken care of at this point, but I think it bears sort of talking about um just the the issue in and of itself no you're gonna you're gonna stand up and worship my leviathan state or i'm gonna punish you bad things are gonna happen to you if you don't stand up and show respect to my killing machine you know when um when people talk about this uh this flag burning issue i uh for me I, I would never you know i would never burn the u.s flag but i've burned flags before i've burned u.n flags Oftentimes, people who uh, uh, you know are in support of the U.S. flag are like, "Oh, that's that's fine," but you got to consider this is just another person's emblem. This is, you know, hey, so you don't like that flag? Fine, it's okay if people burn that one, but not this one. Right, we're gonna do terrible things to you if you don't respect our flag. But you know, we're gonna hold a uh, we're gonna hold a, a Prophet Muhammad drawing contest and uh, you know d- defend it with our lives and uh, and uh, give uh, prizes to the uh, the best uh, drawing, right? And that's not going to enrage. That's gonna enrage a whole bunch of people. But you know, we think that's fine. But if you don't stand and worship our emblem, we will visit horrific punishments on you. Most countries don't have this practice either. Many, uh, you know, when you're talking about sort of Western industrialized nations, this, uh, you know, flag uh, pledge thing isn't going on there. Really? And, Not even in there? I, I, would, I'm, I have a hard time imagining public schools without some sort of daily 
pledge to the government. I remember that there was a time when I was only doing it weekly. So I don't remember when it was specifically that we were only doing it weekly. I think it was in public school. We were only really doing the pledge weekly. I so, have stood up and pledged to the flag hundreds and hundreds of times. We had to do that every single day in, in my schools. I went to a private school. For, where from they the did time I was in kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's another thing is, is trying to get very young people like kindergartners to, you know, ch- pledge allegiance to a flag. What kind of business? I mean, like f- five-year-olds, six-year-olds, they don't have it. You don't have any business forcing people to pledge allegiance that are that young. They can't, they haven't even had an opportunity to form an opinion and you're having them pledge their allegiance. This is indoctrination. This is exactly what indoctrination is. It's nothing else. Oh, of course. It's, I mean, it, there's the, what's the, there's the YouTube video. I, I want to say that Joe Rogan had put it out where it's like the kids are, they start doing the pledge and then at some point in it they go, this is not a form of brainwashing. This is not a form of brainwashing. This is not. And I was like, it really, you, you, you can see it quite plainly. And if you look at the, if you look at the history of the Pledge of Allegiance, I mean, this thing was cooked up by this socialist fanatic, um, uh, Francis Bellamy. Yep. And uh, this was not about, you know, the grand old republic uh, from, from uh, the, the, the 1776, uh, right? He's a That's... flag salesman um, to boot. And so there's this <laughs> weird uh, capitalist socialist bin to it. Um, plus the fact the original salute to the flag looked remarkably like the Nazi salute. I'll tell you, there's, there's no more disturbing picture in American history than to see a bunch of little black kids out with their arms in a Nazi salute to the U.S. flag. You haven't seen anything until you've gone to rexcurry.net and seen actual pictures of school kids prior to the uh, World War II and the rise of the Nazis doing this uh, this pre this this you know proto Nazi salute to this flag. Yeah, I uh, I I do not recall seeing a picture of black children doing it. I do it's recall amazing. a black and white picture of, of white children doing it. It's on it's, I think that's on the Wikipedia page for uh, Francis Bellamy, and it's a. Uh, yeah, it's they're doing this exact same thing, and then you know World War II happens, and we're like, we don't we, we don't really want to look like these guys anymore. So maybe you put your hand over your heart instead, yeah, right? And we'll say this, uh, you know, and and add in a one nation under God to it. And there's been some changes over time, but I, yeah, I mean, it's 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 something to think about. I remember being in a chamber of commerce meeting, and. You know, the, the, the lady was going to lead the meeting and she was going to be, you know, she did the, the, the pledge and everything. And she was going to be all smart. And she said, does anybody know who wrote the pledge? And I, you know, I of course, Francis Scott Key wrote the, uh, um, uh, the, the Star Spangled Banner. So I said, Francis, and I hung on it for just a second, Bellamy. And I'd like to say further, the original salute to the flag, and I put my arm out and showed them what it looked like. Um, and it's a and little then they different. all called you racist. <laughs> you know, my boss later, she's like, could you not have done that part? <laughs> but I think that it was really, and, you know, I mentioned that the guy was a flag salesman and a socialist. And, you know, everybody got a little quick civics lesson that took less than a minute there. And I think that they were all less sort of stunned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I love to hit, you know, you have your flag worshiping conservatives sometimes who who get really bent out of shape about the pledge of allegiance, you know, people uh, not wanting to say it. And I love to give them that little thing. I actually wrote a blog post for that before I was blogging on a regular uh basis at a at a friend's uh blog, it was a guest blog, and uh that got around quite a bit to some folks who had not heard that story yet. So You know, and that's one of the reasons you say it is is that it's so people who don't know can know you should at the very least know the history of the of the pledge let's go to daniel calling in from utah daniel you're on free talk live what's on your mind hey i wanted to uh, jump in on the comment of the previous topic but you know on the pledge of allegiance um and i think this um kind of goes in on both i'm I'm a military veteran and the the flag is very important to me and i you know the, the pledge of allegiance i take it very seriously but also, when you're pledging allegiance to something, yeah, it's a big deal. And if someone doesn't feel like they want to do that to the flag or to the country, they they definitely have the right to not do it. And for anyone to, um, uh, you know, to treat them poorly because of that, I mean, that's that's just un-American, you know. And, and I think in cases where that's happening, you know, I as a military veteran. Uh, you know, other veterans, other people who have made sacrifices in other ways, you know, they've 
they've sacrificed for us to have the freedom to pledge allegiance to the flag or the right to stand there and not do it. You know, so it's... That's the that's the God's honest truth, Daniel. Thank you for your opinion. I think that that's uh, yeah. that's exactly right, right? Like you know, the I, people that I don't think that's right at all. Wait, you don't think that uh, people? I don't think they sacrificed so that people had rights. I don't I buy think, that. Well, I think they that was their intention, whether that they were successful in that intention. That's or not. the pitch. I'll give you. A, well, I'll I'll let you talk about it here in a second. Eight fifty five, four fifty three. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa.LRN.FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa.LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,218 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. Antiwar.com reports, remember how the Afghan war ended at the end of 2014 only for NATO to announce the resolution support mission, which was keeping occupation forces and by extension the war through the end of 2016? Yesterday, without much fanfare, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg announced that NATO had decided to stay in Afghanistan beyond 2016 and that this will have a military compact. Unlike other NATO operations in Afghanistan, which had some sort of deadline attached to them to eventually break, the latest announcement does not include any timeline at all, suggesting the occupation, even rhetorically, is open-ended. This isn't entirely surprising, with the U.S. already having a formal deal to keep troops in Afghanistan through 2024 and beyond, which seems to ensure that both the U.S. and NATO troops will be in Afghanistan for many years to come. The announcement is likely to be a huge blow to Afghan peace talks, as the Taliban had conditioned any talks on the withdrawal of foreign forces, and NATO seems to be settling in for a long stay. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports Nebraska has become the 16th state affected by the ongoing avian flu out, and officials announced on Tuesday it would kill 1.7 million chickens. The H5N2 avian influenza spread to an egg farm in Dixon County, where chickens will be quarantined and euthanized with the oversight of trained veterinarians. Nebraska Agricultural Department Director Greg Ebach told NBC News, Unfortunately, Nebraska has joined a long list of states currently dealing with the highly pathogenic avian influenza. The goal is to quarantine the flock and attempt to control and contain the virus as quickly as possible. Officials are urging farmers in the surrounding area of northeast Nebraska to follow proper biosecurity procedures. Most egg-laying operations in the state occur in the northeast, and Nebraska has nearly 10 billion egg-laying chickens, ranking 10th among states in egg production. More than 32 million birds have been affected by the virus since December. Iowa, the top producing state in the country, recently became the third in the nation to declare a state of emergency as a result of the fast-spreading avian flu, joining Minnesota and Wisconsin. The highly pathogenic H5N2 bird flu has devastated dozens of farms across the U.S. However, health experts do warn that it is not contagious to humans. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Wired reports in a landslide move yesterday, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to pass the USA Freedom Act. The bill passed overwhelmingly by a vote of 338 to 88, and the bill calls for records to be retained by telecoms and forces the NSA to obtain court orders from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to gain access to them. It also requires the agency to use specific terms to narrow its access to only relevant records. The bill, however, isn't in the clear just yet. It now goes to the Senate for a vote. Civil liberties groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation and others are divided in their support of the bill. Many say it's better than nothing, but hope the Senate will add wording to strengthen protections before passage. EFF had supported the legislation until last week when a federal court of appeals ruled that the bulk collection of phone data is illegal. In that decision, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals found that the collection of Americans' phone metadata was never authorized by Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act as the intelligence intelligence community had insisted. The EFF has now said that the ruling should embolden the Senate to roll back the bill to a previous 2013 version that provides stronger reforms. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Scientology Minister Frank D. Linehan was arrested this morning on 471 charges of molesting thetans. The popular 56-year-old minister was reportedly taken into custody after an investigation revealed this week that he sexually abused dozens of thetans in the past year, with many of the ancient alien spirits being as young as 65 million years old. Church members left these thetans alone with someone they trusted, and Mr. Linehan clearly violated that trust. According to police reports the abuse continued as recently as last week when Linehan forced a 70 million year old alien spirit to perform oral sex during a level OT2 solo auditing session. Since the allegations against Linehan surfaced, more and more church members have come forward about Thetan abuse. Despite the church's efforts to recover from the incident, the scandal may alienate a whole generation of Scientologists. I don't see how they can expect anyone to continue moving up the bridge to total freedom and achieve clear after this. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. So we've been talking about this um, issue of this young lady who is in school here, in middle school, in, in nearby, actually, to where we do the show. But it could have happened anywhere. And apparently she hasn't been stand, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance for some time. 
Now, good for her. I can tell you that this would have been a pretty big deal not to stand for the pledge in my school. Now, I remember getting a bit of in, in some trouble over simply standing quietly and not doing anything else. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, whatever my reasons were, you know, in high school, I was reading these uh, anarcho communist books and you know, coming to my conclusions on politics and these sorts of things. And yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I would look at my opinions back then and call them immature today. Certainly. But that doesn't mean the, the way you get mature opinions is by having immature ones, not by being told what is right and what is wrong, what is correct and what is incorrect your whole lives. That's well, what you I get. A myrmidon. I, no, I mean, you could tell people what's right and what's wrong their whole lives. I just don't know that the, the, the centralized state is necessarily the best person to tell you. But, okay, so I, I do, the state isn't telling you. The state isn't the one generally making you say the Pledge of Allegiance. So, some a, teacher paid thereby. And it's just social pressure, mostly by people who don't spend a great deal of time thinking about these particular issues. You know, what uh, do they think about how often politicians use the flag to get a, to, to, you know, shade their, their activities and skulk up around behind it? I don't think they do. I think they say many people. Brave young men have sacrificed their lives for that flag. Therefore, you should have reverence for it. That's it. That flag stands for the Bill of Rights and stuff. Thanks for being dead, soldier. <laughs> right. Swell thing of you to do. Well, Too bad every war you ever fought in lost freedom for us. Way to go, pal. I think that um, you know many people look at the struggle for uh, you know World War II, right? And they say that gained freedom for Jews. And that's hard to disagree with. It certainly did. But I would say that there it was not the reason that the United States or, frankly, any other government went to war. Uh, you could see that the United States turned away what they call a ship of the damned, if you want to go look it up. This is a, a ship full of Jews trying to find some place to go. Couldn't find any place to land. And the United States government was like, go take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened. They, I, I think to a person, they all died. So if, if the U.S. wanted to save some Jews, there was an opportunity to do that. Right. That's and, just a little war propaganda. Right. So uh, but some people would say that it had to do with an attack um, on Pearl Harbor. I think there's a pretty good argument for that. I don't think that the, uh, the Empire of Japan at the time was a particularly nice organization. But it bears pointing out that the United States government was disallowing uh, U.S. companies from selling oil to... Uh, Japan because of their actions in China. Yeah, that's that thing about borders. Like if goods and services don't cross over them, soldiers have this funny tendency of doing it. Yeah, generally that's the case. So, you know, that's worth looking at. There's also the McCullough memo uh, where this uh, high rank, this you, p p Pentagon essentially uh, official wrote, you know, this is why we have to go to Japan. We have to go to war with Japan. And, um, you know, there's this all, you know, laid out idea and it's, believed like indisputably that fdr would have seen this now a lot of people say things about pulling the ships into the harbor and that there's a conspiracy theory surrounding that i there's not a lot of evidence for that but you can look up the mccullough memo today well and you and you can see that uh you know right before there's an attack on it you put like the what the entire fleet there i mean it was it's at the very best you're talking about a huge strategic blunder in the middle of a world war well, it would be the beginning of a world. Well, I guess it was the middle of the World War, and they had already a Japanese. Okay, yeah, I, I, it's difficult to argue with. Your like statement. the the entire the entire planet is killing each other. Let's put all our military in this one spot and make sure that they stay safe. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't work out clearly. So, um, yeah, the American people were upset. I don't know that they necessarily had to sink a uh, ship in Pearl Harbor in order to get the U.S. To, to go to war. But I can tell you a lot of young men signed up after that occurred. So they were either, you know, either successful or it was uh, they overplayed their hand, whatever it might be. Anyway, let's go on here with the, uh, uh, the young lady. She was told by the teacher to uh, she was motioned to stand up. She shook her head. No. Once the pledge was over, um, the student was uh, told by the teacher that it was, uh, wasn't was okay for her to sit during the salute. The teacher's father was in the military, and Fatima, that's the student's, her actions were disrespectful. Uh, the teacher continued that if Fatima wanted to sit during the pledge, she should leave the room. Then uh, she, 
Fatima says, then she told me to leave the classroom and I sat out in the hallway for a while. Fatima said she felt embarrassed and upset, especially with the exchange taking place in front of the entire class of about 17 or 18 students. After about 10 minutes, Fatima said uh, the teacher came back and um, uh, had her come back into the classroom. And the teacher said that the students uh, to, told the students that anyone who didn't participate in the pledge would have to wait outside the classroom until the salute was done. At that point, Fatima said she uh, left the class and walked out of the school. On her way home, she p was picked up by a Swansea police officer who uh, brought her back to the school and uh, left her with the assistant principal, um, according to the police report. Okay, so now we're going to send armed kidnappers out to grab you if you walk away from our little religious fantasy world. Yeah, um, the apparently the Fatima will be allowed to exercise her legally protected right not to stand for the flag, and she is no longer in that class, according to the assistant principal. Um, wow, I'm really kind of surprised that uh, they they sent. See that with this new homeschooling thing, do they have the right? To go and grab a kid off the side of the road, a 14-year-old can walk home, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the, that, that'd the be school. the theory, right? She, the, the, the thing is, and I mean, it has happened to me before that, like, I, I mean, this is in New York, though, that, like, yeah, if you, if you were cutting out of school, like, you're supposed to be in school, then the school will, like, report you as missing, and then the police will come and get you. And it's not like a normal missing persons report where you need to be 24 hours or whatever it is. Uh, a school says, hey, go get them, and they go get them. Well, with homeschooling, you can essentially quit school anytime you want. Right. Um, uh, there's, you know, different there's different philosophies of homeschooling out there. One of them is called unschooling, and that basically is no school at all. Now, you'll young people learn things anyway, and they're naturally curious, and it's right for some kids. It's probably not right for others, but... Um, I think it's kind of interesting they're able to go and grab this girl. I was just talking to Tom Woods. He just finished the uh, the Ron Paul homeschool curriculum. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you're thinking about maybe I don't want my child to be humiliated and kidnapped off the streets because uh, she doesn't want to participate in a flag worshiping ceremony, then maybe you go uh, figure that one out. Let's uh, talk to Richard calling in from Pennsylvania. Richard, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about this clip that I saw on Reddit. Um, and the free teen was actually on Stephen Colbert's uh, show. And I was wondering, maybe you can take a look at the clip. You can probably oh, find it. I'm pretty familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Uh, I'm the guy they called the enforcer. I'm carrying the gun that was in that clip right now. Yeah, I I, uh, I was wondering maybe if you could like uh, you know talk about it or something if there is something to talk about it. I just thought it was pretty. Uh, I mean, pretty it's funny. It's old news to us, but I mean, if you have a question about it, I'll answer it. Um. Well, I I guess how how do you feel about it? Look, we, we expected the Colbert Report to come here and make fun of us, right? So, I mean, there was a lot of sort of hand-wringing that they tried to make us look stupid. But, I mean, that's what – it's a comedy show. That's what they do, right? Uh, we were just sort of happy to get people, uh, you know, looking at what it is that we're doing here. It, it's, it's certainly got me and uh, me and Freakeen, uh, you know, traffic bumps to our websites and drew a lot of attention to the uh, the very serious work that we're doing here. Richard, I'm going to keep you on the line. I want to hear a little bit more of what you got to say. Um just put you on hold here. 855-450-3733. Your call's up next. 855-450-FREE here on Free Talk Live. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanized to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight-year-old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, his ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard a commercial for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within Four days, Jake started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. 
everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Our education system is, frankly, government-run, government-funded, yeah. um, and we're dumbed down. You could, you could go down just... the laundry list of the different things oh. that people would admit that the government did wrong or botched up or cost way too much, and it still doesn't have any effect on them. They still just bounce right back and say, well, we need government to do all these things. Well, yes, I... they make some mistakes. Yes, they spend billions of dollars too much. Sure, they kill innocent people around the world, but we need them. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have I, them I do these it... things. I find it quite amazing that, you, you know, they say the first thing they seem to do is, like, oh, turn to government. They've got the solution somehow. Yep. Goodness knows. That's happens. what they've been programmed to do by the government schools. Exactly. Brainwashed. Absolutely brainwashed. And they're so dumb about it. They believe it's the case. However, you, you then ask the next question, if you, if you dare to, is uh, you say, well, OK, well, would you trust any politicians? And the first answer is no way. Right. right. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855 450 Free here on this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Cantwell from ChristopherCantwell.com. Sitting in, our guest host here from your blog. Tell me what's going on over there. Uh, what's going on up there? The, the, the latest, latest article is responding to some criticisms. As we discussed last night, I had uh, I had an incident where I had to pull my weapon on some uh, some lunatics on Main Street on Saturday, and and there was all sorts of hand wringing about that. So I have a a response to four of the most popular criticisms is uh, up at the top there, and just below that, there's the the video of the actual incident and in a and in an episode of Radical Agenda where we're talking about that and polyamory. And that has been blowing up. Yeah, I had over five hundred thousand hits on the video. Really, I thought it was a. You know, I figured it'd get somewhere to a million. Anyway, uh, Richard wanted to call in and talk about the Colbert Report video that he had just recently run across, and this is the sort of the wonders of the internet. Um, he just recently run across this uh, video that 
it's pretty old news for us. I don't know if it's been a year, but it's pretty darn close. I think that my video ended up bringing this back to the forefront. So a lot of like the uh, the stop free keeners and all the, the the local haters everywhere they see my video, they post up this thing about the enforcer, mm-hmm. right? Because oh, this is it, the the Colbert report came here. For those who are not familiar, the Colbert report came to. Uh, came to Keen to talk about us doing the uh, the Robin Hooding, putting coins in parking meters before the meter maid can write a ticket. And I had just moved back to Keene, like, on that day. I was not planning to go down there. I wasn't planning to be with the Colbert Report, but somebody had just been assaulted in Central Square. So I went down there, open carrying my handgun. This is a camera crew from New York. (laughs) They're like, wow, this guy has a gun, and I can see it. And they got really interested in that, so they labeled me the enforcer. And so a lot of people who took issue with my video wanted to bring it back to that and be like, this guy's just looking for an excuse to kill somebody was sort of the commentary. Yeah, honestly, the Colbert Report's cobbled together. It's a bunch of nonsense. Have you ever done any Robin Hooding? Yeah, I've done a, I've done some Robin Hooding, and that's the other thing too. Like I did Robin Hooding in like 2012 or 2013, maybe, mm-hmm. and uh, and and in the course of that, I was one of the more controversial Robin Hooders, right? So I was the one who would go and sort of berate the meter maids while we were doing it, whereas most of the people who did it were were pretty calm about it. They were just putting coins in meters and, and recording them. But you weren't part of the Robin Hooding lawsuit. I thought you had no. I wasn't part of the lawsuit, but they 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 took one of my videos in there like evidence for the lawsuit, and I wasn't even a part to it they're just trying to make it out like uh like this is happening every day when some comedian from new york comes up and starts berating people so richard your thoughts yeah uh so i guess i uh just saw that a little bit later because i saw that on uh reddit when the video of uh uh the the video of chris Cantwell uh defending himself against those uh people who were starting some sort of uh, particular um, domestic abuse sort of situation or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess uh, because of that, uh, some people on uh, Reddit picked that up and put up the uh, Stephen Colbert thing. I guess so it's worth I, I worth doing. I mean, I can see why people would want to say, "Oh yeah, well, there's another you know important video of him." Yeah, it's here's this guy. Oh my God, he had a gun last year, and all of a sudden he pulled it out on somebody almost an entire year later. So go ahead. Yeah, and I, I find that uh, yeah, I, I just kind of find that kind of funny about the leftists because I I used to be a leftist myself, and I never really used to be against guns because they have always seen them as something to uh defend yourself against other people even you know even what when i was a leftist so i i don't know where people are getting the idea just because uh you know you make guns harder to uh get um that like people aren't going to go out and shoot other people because uh the entire thing is uh it doesn't matter how many laws you put up uh criminals are still going to get guns and go out and shoot people that are unarmed. Yep. Yeah. The, if so. you, you make guns harder to get, you make guns harder to carry, then the, the best case scenario of, of my incident on Saturday night is I turn into Kung Fu Master and fight off for assailants, right? That's the best outcome. What more likely happens is these guys drag me into an alley and beat me unconscious and take everything I have. At three. Exactly. So I, I, I love I how the, the, the folks that are going after you, stuff. sorry on this, Richard, I love how the folks who are going after you on this really don't ever take a look at the other side. We're talking about some people who were drunk on Main Street, right next to people's homes, screaming their heads off with their shirts off. I mean, these are... <laughs> and it was chilly out that night. I had a jacket on, right? These people are not in their right minds. And I'm like, hey, this sounds like it might become violent. I better take out my camera and make sure nobody gets hurt. And sure enough, the incident turned violent. Seems like my, you know, assessment was was spot on. And uh, good thing I was able to stop them before they, they caused me serious bodily harm. And stop them from getting in the car, their drunk asses, and driving away. Oh, well, there's that. So anyway, Richard, any last thoughts? Uh, it's just gonna one more thing uh, that also brings up the question whether or not that actually goes against the non-aggression principle to try to uh, try to get in the middle of a bad situation and uh, not with a camera. Like-
stop anything bad from happening. No, for me to stand in the middle of the street with a camera well away from them, uh, recording them in a public space, is absolutely not a violation of a non-aggression principle or any law in the United States. It's a foundationally ridiculous statement that people would make that claim about me. I'm not saying that you're making it, but some people have made it, that I'm an aggressor because I'm out there like, hey, I think these people are violent and crazy, so I will record them, and wow, they really are violent and crazy. I guess I have to defend myself. Uh, that's, uh, you know, there's there's no case to be made for that. People put up recordings of all types of incidents on the internet every single day, and nobody makes that claim against them. It's only when they come and attack me, and I pull out my gun, and it's Christopher Cantwell doing it, that they make that claim. And the people who make it, they're, they're, they're not honest. Thanks for the call, Richard. Oops, sorry, 855-450 free. We got other calls on the line here. Let's go to Corey calling in from Minnesota. Corey, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I kind of caught the tail end when you were talking about politicians hiding behind the flag. And uh, the gentleman you have on tonight, the enforcer, made a comment uh, that with every war and the dead soldiers, we've lost rights. And that one really chapped my butt. Okay. All right. So- I want to know where we coming with that okay can you tell me what liberty was gained by what war what was lost what was lost i don't the know alien, a lot of lives what, and tax what, dollars what, and inflation so and there was the alien and sedition act and, um, alien sedition act uh, that came under the uh, uh, adams administration what was the one during world war one where uh, and uh, during the civil war lincoln uh, stopped suspended habeas corpus and uh, silenced the press yeah world war one was... had some kind of sedition act that you know aiding the enemy or something like that if you said positive things about them uh, i mean of course if you were you happen to be have a japanese surname in world war ii you got incarceration so i mean it's certainly a good argument that that liberties have been lost during sort of the time frames of the war what do you think about that Corey? Well, uh, the biggest thing was, wow, the dead soldiers, they're the ones. Boy, you guys died foolishly for the losing of rights. Uh, that one really wasn't. Okay, it, it, he's, he's saying that he's offended by this thing that actually happened, and I don't know what okay. to say to that. Okay, well, let's uh, bring him back as I get him a little more time here okay. just to make sure that we, we're clear on what we're talking about. Corey, please hold the line. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into their rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Unbelievable. Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications it's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further i know you're busy but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com due to an upturn in the economy main street business loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars we've sent out millions of pre-approval letters we see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505, 800-430-4505, that's 800-430-4505. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime, 213-493-0309, that's 213-493-0309. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. We give away our archives. They're going back for many, many, many years at archives.freetalklive.com. Yep, most of those other talk show hosts, they charge you for their ar archives. We don't do that. You can go get them at archives.freetalklive.com. So Corey called in the end of the last segment, and um, he took some issue with what you had said, uh, Cantwell, regarding, I don't know exactly what the uh, the statement was. but the, the statement was that every time there's a war, we lose freedom. So people who tell me they're dying for my freedom, I don't find the claim credible. Well, okay. you, basically, you basically said that, hey, hey, the dead soldiers, ha ha, you didn't die for crap. That's basically what it came across. Well, what I I think the the remark that you're coming across there is when people are saying, "Oh, you thank you for dying for my freedom." I'm saying that these people are essentially saying, "Hey, thanks for being dead, soldier." That was the actual remark that was sort that of was sarcastic in nature, you know. And I'm saying that it's foundationally ridiculous for somebody to say, "Thank you for being dead, soldier," because the the fact of the matter is, they didn't go over there and and fight for my freedom. They might have, maybe they believe that pitch. But that's short attention span theater, because as we started to say before we went out, uh, you know, every every time there's a war, things get worse in the in the in the country that's going to the war. Right. We have, you know, the well, Alien and Sedition Acts. We have taxes. We have inflation. We have the Patriot Act, the TSA. I mean, how many different examples do we need? I'll, I'll give you the one for the for this last Gulf War, Iraq and Afghanistan, the Patriot Act. But. What rights were lost during the first Gulf War, what rights were lost during the Vietnam War or the Korean War, if you go back to the internment of Japanese people in America during World War II, we admitted that was wrong. Are we still interning them? Absolutely not. No, well, but the, but it it sets precedence, right? So governments set precedent and then they say, hey, we have a power now, right? That's, that's, that's a loss of freedom. Well, I, I, I would say this, Corey, um, and I'm willing to go ahead and say that there is no relationship between the fighting of wars, the death of soldiers, 
and freedom in the United States. I'm not going to say that necessarily, you know, one's greater than the other. We can say from, say, the 1880s until now, if you happen to be a white male, that your freedoms have diminished. However, freedoms for, you know, blacks and women have probably increased in that time frame. So it gets a little, it gets kind of murky, um, but... I don't think that the soldiers can you can do you believe the soldiers fight for freedom or do you believe that they fight so that Washington can t- continue to go about doing its business? You know, if that were the fact, I would have never have joined the military in 1988 if I thought it was just for Washington. Part of it is part of our freedom. You put on the uniform to serve. Right, well, but, but to, to serve what master? Serve whom? Cuz you're not listening serving States. me. In a sense, you are. Well, okay, then come wash my car. And, and, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't make any come sense. On, well, nice Colonel analogy. Corey. Let's compare apples to apples here. But, but uh, Corey, you're, <laughs> let's use proper terminology because we have been lied to and indoctrinated our entire lives by statists, okay? And, if and, we don't, and I would not disagree with that If we don't use good terminology, then we will continue to be lied to. The serving you okay. did were to your direct superiors who did serving to direct superiors on up to the president and other politicians in washington dc all of whom were paid by taking money from me without my consent through through coercive uh, violence and and through the uh, and through inflation and i would also say oh. that many of these wars probably the war you fought in Corey, probably Try didn't need to be fought in Try three of them <laughs> okay do you think Believe that the, the i mean do you think that the people that died the the brave uh, men and women that died, do you think they actually died for something? And if so, what is it? I'd like to know. Essentially, freedom of the United States. That's so Believe ethereal, not, Corey. I can't I can't quantify that in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, you, you might as well have then, just said then, God and country. I mean, it, it's a... It's a well, it, no, then, then you have never put on the uniform to understand it fully. But no, see, this is this is we not have, this is well, you're, that's, you're that's redirecting completely, un, completely unfair, Corey. We've had veterans call in here and say that they were paid killers working for liars and thieves in Washington, D.C. I haven't come out and said that. So, I mean, you've got to rebut. There's plenty of veterans who do not feel the way that you do. You can't hoist up the flag or the uniform and say, I speak for the veterans. Well, that's not. But in a, cer- in a certain part, we have worked for liars and thieves. Well, well, so so I, you know, I got a buddy by the name of Adam Kokesh, right? He's a he's a he's a Marine veteran from the Iraq War, and he's gotten with an organization called Iraq Veterans Against the War, right? And and he and he says a lot of the things that we're saying. Uh, I'm in, lo- in no small por- part uh, uh, repeating the words of a uh, Iraq War veteran about wars throughout history, not just in the United States, everywhere in the world. When countries gear up to go to war, they're usually up to no good. And usually, when you're going to go kill a bunch of strangers it's not probably for a good reason right yes okay so uh, well, when you put on a you uniform to... that guarantees you're going to kill a bunch of strangers what do you what do you think do you think every job in the military is killing people every job in the military is based around killing people you are <laughs> at the best support staff to that killing machine but you're not directly pulling the trigger well they arrested al capone's uh, accountants too sir did yes but that was for a much bigger. That again, that's not comparing apples to apples. Well, I don't know how to address it. I um, mean, not every job in the military is uh, a paid killer, but I, as I've been told that every every guy in the army is a soldier first, and then after yeah. that, there's something else. So, I mean, well, then you're saying that uh, you know that you're saying yes, they are. Well, you have to be trained in basic stuff through the army, the marines, the air force, the navy. Okay. But there is a bigger job to that, too. Well, I don't want to vilify the average individual who's gone in um, because they want some college money or because they've been uh, indoctrinated into believing that, you know, the that everything that comes out of Washington, D.C. is good, just, right, and fair. Um, I don't want to vilify that person because I don't think they've had a chance to experience the world enough to get an idea. They're just too young. But... We have to we have to point out it's based on the guns and the backpacks of those people that the folks in Washington D.C. are able to do everything they've done. War is the health of the state, and war is hell. <laughs> Indeed, it is. Thank you for the call, Corey. The health the health of the state is hell. Certainly, <laughs> one of the things that is difficult about this is I. I get where the military guys come from, but when you talk about the you know you wouldn't know what it's like to wear the uniform. 
it kind of says that my opinion isn't as valid as theirs. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just trying to shut down the, the discussion. And I mean, look, I understand the concept of, hey, I will put myself in harm's way to help others. I mean, that's what I told NH1 about the situation that I was in on Main Street the other night when I had to pull a gun on some people. I will put myself in harm's way to to help others. And if people try to uh, harm me in the course of that, I will end lives. I get that. Right. I, I like the idea of fighting evil, which is why I am vehemently and ruthlessly, ruthlessly anti-government, because government is the number one purveyor of evil in the world. So when you put on the uniform and you serve the government, I don't take that with a whole lot of credibility because I don't think it takes much to figure this out. When you say the government, you don't mean the U.S. government. You mean the concept of the state generally. The state, the, okay. the, the global institution of coercion. Let's go to Dax calling in from Dallas. Dax, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how's it going? It's it's going uh, swell. For the previous caller, I hate telling, but truth is treason in an, in an empire of lies. So. I think he gets that. I just it could be hard to hear these things mentioned in a in a, in a rough fashion, in a uh, in in a frank and glib way. Yeah, but I called to uh, to tell Cantwell, you know. Seeing the video, I think that's how any responsible person who has concealed carry or any other license would conduct themselves. So, great job on the way you handled yourself, and you know, yeah, man, I appreciate it. I mean, most of the most of the criticism that has come in is is not from you know pro gun communities, except that they would say like, "Hey, average gun owner, you probably shouldn't insert yourself in that situation," which is not which is not terrible advice. I mean, I'm a guy who does this for a living, right? I've live streamed riots and SWAT raids. It's kind of my thing to rush into danger. Yeah, if you have any opinions yeah. about what, uh, thanks for the call, Dax. Uh, what Cantwell did, I'd love to hear it. What critique? 855-450-3733. You got him right here. This He's the big YouTube star now. <laughs> 855-450-FREE or LRN.FM on Skype. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call one 800 4 425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results Results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website FPP.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. We've been... Well, we've been talking about the uh, sort of the military topic here over the last couple of segments. And, you know, Free Talk Live, we take a, we take a stand that not entirely popular in talk radio. So, um, but I hope we do a reasonably good job of defending it. If you want to get, reach a bunch of people with the ideas of liberty, a great place to do it is from the back of your car with a bumper sticker from libertystickers.com. I have uh, one that says Barack Obama's fired more cruise missiles than all other peace prize winners combined <laughs> <laughs> i like that one you can check out their vast selection of witty poignant pithy and downright bombastic liberty oriented messages over at libertystickers.com you know people love to read bumper stickers you've scooted forward in a uh, in a line of traffic just so you can get a better look at them it's libertystickers.com let's go to adam calling in from Massachusetts, living, listening to LRN.FM. Adam, what's on your mind? Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to chime in. Uh, I'm interested about the uh, the caller of two, two calls ago. He was um, – it, it seems like he's still kind of disillusioned with the whole service in the military. I myself am a combat veteran. I did four deployments to the Middle East. And um, when I was growing up, I, I had a lot of liberal friends, and I actually felt like kind of a rebel. I was a fan of – Bill O'Reilly and voted for George Bush and everything like that. But um, during my service, I kind of started learning, and that's when I kind of started becoming a libertarian and kind of really struck home with the ideas of liberty. But uh, when you mentioned uh, Al Capone and the the caller was saying you need to compare apples to apples, it actually reminded me of this uh, quote from uh, Smedley Butler. Have you guys ever read uh, War is a Racket? I have read War is a Racket through a... think three times it has to be one of the worst written books out there but it has so much good information in it he writes it in sort of his speaking style which is very country true i just wanted to share this one quote that i i remembered and uh i looked it up real quick if you don't mind me sharing it it, it kind of clear you can share smedley on. butler on these airwaves anytime mm-hmm. all right so the quote goes i spent 33 years and four months in active duty military service and during that period, I spent most of my time as a high-class muscle man for big business, for Wall Street and the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. I helped make Mexico and especially Tampico safe for American oil interests in 1914. I helped Haiti and Cuba, a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues in. I helped in the raping of half a dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. I helped purify Nicaragua for the International Banking House of Brown Brothers in 1902 to 1912. I brought light to the Dominican Republic for the American sugar interest in 1916 
I helped make Honduras right for the American fruit companies in 1903. In China, 1927, I helped see that Standard Oil went on its way unmolested. Looking back on it, I might have given Al Capone a few hints. The best he could do was operate in his racket in three districts, and I operated on three continents. Another thing to point out about Smedley Butler, um, for those that wish to diminish him, um, he won the Medal of Honor two times. There are very few human beings who did that. He almost won it. He would have won it a third had he not been an officer at the time. They weren't giving it to officers, but they did give it well, to— He actually won the officer version of the Medal of Honor. It's, it's a different name, but yeah. he, he did get it as an officer. Yeah, So, but I can't legitimately say that he won the Medal of Honor three times. Um, but I think that that makes him— would have made him the most decorated, uh, you know, military whatever um, in in history. But you know, I don't know. Uh, Guy might have known a thing or two about the industry he was in. Indeed, he did. He was in a <laughs> fight with uh, blackjack mullet, uh, uh, blackjack Pershing, and that's the reason he didn't get to go to World War One. He really wanted to go, but um, nonetheless, a tr- true American patriot in many ways. Thanks for the call, Adam. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Let's go to Chris in Connecticut. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, good evening, Mark and Gunslinger. Um, I just wanted to um, <laughs> ex- explain to the last uh, the caller that we're all ranting on how free we actually are upon this landmass called the United States of America, and uh, give my opinion as to what the military could actually be be doing to preserve our freedoms. Okay. Um, how how free we actually are? Well, we're we're all controlled by these racketeering organizations that call themselves cities, towns, and states that tell us they, that we will use their services or they will come and break our legs. You know, pretty much just like uh, Al Capone saying, "Use my garbage company, or I'll come break your legs." But they'll throw us in a cage, and their don called the judge will issue some kind of edict to make them go out and do it. That's basically that. They're just organized crime syndicates purporting to be under some color of law. Hey, now you hang on a second there. It's completely legal for them to do all of that. (laughs) Yeah, they wrote it down. They wrote it down and they stamped it, and then they they said a prayer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if this the military is, were well, actually it, to it, look it bears, out for our freedom. Hold on, hold on just a second, Chris. It bears, yes, sir, yes, uh, uh, you know, it does, there, there are some similarities between organized crime and the government. And all you have to do is sort of look at the distinguishing features of organized crime and then sort of ask yourself, well, how does that relate to the government? In what ways does it relate? And it's essentially, a by any other name. Yeah, it's the same thing, only more successful. Um, now, Red to large. be successful, it has it has to morph in some way, right? Like you have to give the constituency some illusion of choice. But when you're just picking between the average Republican and the average Democrat every two or four years, you don't really have a choice. It's the red statist or the blue statist. The the difference between the government and the mafia is the talent of their propagandists. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, pretty much the size and scope of their uh, their their empire. And in, in the military, if they were actually looking out for our freedom, they would be marching upon the Federal Reserve Building and issuing a cease and desist order and every other unconstitutional agency like the ATF, DEA, et cetera, and shoving them down and hauling them into some kind of courtroom and, you know, hanging them for crimes against humanity. I love that shirt. If, if the troops protected freedom, they'd attack the government. Well, they, they would march on the Federal Reserve and issue a cease and desist order. And boy, let me tell you how that irks my local uh, talk show neocon host when I get that point out across his airways. <laughs> what, he, did, he likes the Federal Reserve? Most people don't have any really particularly oh, yeah. positive uh, viewpoint on the Federal Reserve. Well, he seems to be like a libertarian co-opting propagandist that I kind of noticed a trend of nationwide in the past couple of years where they say uh-huh. it's, a, it's, it's Paul Krugman on the Sirius XM Patriot yeah. Network. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a libertarian, many... but we got to illegalize marijuana to protect the cops and the Federal Reserve is good. Basically, that's what they are. Yeah, if you're, if, if you're claiming to be a libertarian and you're arguing for um, marijuana to be illegal and you're arguing for the Federal Reserve, you don't know what a libertarian is. No, I think he said that he, he wanted to legalize marijuana to protect the cops. Was that the... Yeah, I think he could possibly be some kind of, you know, let's get conspiratorial. We know Mockingbird, Operation CIA and Mockingbird did exist. These people, these agents have to still be out there in the media, you know, propagandizing the poor unwashed masters to some degree, right? 
Yeah, right, there right, right. there are no shortage of people who are trying to hijack libertarianism, and uh, you know some of them some of them are far better at mimicking libertarian uh, rhetoric than others. Uh, but I, I imagine that uh, the, the the gentleman that you're talking about, if he's pro Federal Reserve, probably hasn't even. I, I I don't even think I don't even think that he's like a. a I don't I don't think he's some kind of uh, agent. If I'm honest with you, because any any government educated anti liberty propagandist would know that any libertarian would hear pro Federal Reserve and change the station. I'll tell you what I put it out here right now. If uh, if anybody anybody at the Federal Reserve actually makes agents, just go ahead, give me a call. I want to negotiate what the check size is going to be i'll change my position on gold and uh, value-backed currency all you have to do is write me a check on a regular basis i'm down for it well, but but you, you would not argue that there's probably some propagandist within the media syndicates still today as in were uncovered by the uh, frank church hearings back in the 70s they don't need them <laughs> uh, oh, I I absolutely believe that. I mean, look, you you've got a you've got a con near completely controlled uh, you know mainstream communications. Look, a, a radio station can't get uh, get on without without a license. The uh, you know FCC licenses for for broadcast stations. There's all sorts of stuff in uh, um, you know even cable TV and likely satellite as well. Uh, you know, Every station that airs Free Talk Live has its license through the FCC, and none of them's lost it because of what we say or Alex Jones or anybody else. I'm, I'm no, but in the morning, in the morning, their local news readers read the same canned news nationwide. You know, yeah. most of it's having to do with American Idol and like grooming sheep, but then they inflect some little pro-war propaganda, be it NPR, the local neocon station. What a or, surprise. Or People are taught who are picked for their voices or their faces in order to deliver the news. I, I wouldn't disagree yep. with you on that, but I don't think they, I, you know, propagandists, no, I think that they, you know, in many ways, the media just worships the government like so many citizens do. They don't they don't take uh, take seriously their their vow to the American people, which is to hold responsible those in the state. I, I don't know that they made a vow to do that. I think they made a vow to their advertisers to make money. 855 Thanks for All the right, call, sir. Chris. Take care. Appreciate it. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-free. Or you can uh, use Skype. It's lrn.fm. 855-450-free here on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 14th, 2015. 
Silver is trading at $17.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,218 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. Antiwar.com reports, remember how the Afghan war ended at the end of 2014 only for NATO to announce the resolution support mission, which was keeping occupation forces and by extension the war through the end of 2016? Yesterday, without much fanfare, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg announced that NATO had decided to stay in Afghanistan beyond 2016 and that this will have a military compact. Unlike other NATO operations in Afghanistan, which had some sort of deadline attached to them to eventually break, the latest announcement does not include any timeline at all, suggesting the occupation, even rhetorically, is open-ended. This isn't entirely surprising, with the U.S. already having a formal deal to keep troops in Afghanistan through 2024 and beyond, which seems to ensure that both the U.S. and NATO troops will be in Afghanistan for many years to come. The announcement is likely to be a huge blow to Afghan peace talks, as the Taliban had conditioned any talks on the withdrawal of foreign forces, and NATO seems to be settling in for a long stay. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports Nebraska has become the 16th state affected by the ongoing avian flu out, and officials announced on Tuesday it would kill 1.7 million chickens. The H5N2 avian influenza spread to an egg farm in Dixon County, where chickens will be quarantined and euthanized with the oversight of trained veterinarians. Nebraska Agricultural Department Director Greg Ebach told NBC News, Unfortunately, Nebraska has joined a long list of states currently dealing with the highly pathogenic avian influenza. The goal is to quarantine the flock and attempt to control and contain the virus as quickly as possible. Officials are urging farmers in the surrounding area of northeast Nebraska to follow proper biosecurity procedures. Most egg-laying operations in the state occur in the northeast, and Nebraska has nearly 10 billion egg-laying chickens, ranking 10th among states in egg production. More than 32 million birds have been affected by the virus since December. Iowa, the top producing state in the country, recently became the third in the nation to declare a state of emergency as a result of the fast-spreading avian flu, joining Minnesota and Wisconsin. The highly pathogenic H5N2 bird flu has devastated dozens of farms across the U.S. However, health experts do warn that it is not contagious to humans. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Wired reports in a landslide move yesterday, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to pass the USA Freedom Act. The bill passed overwhelmingly by a vote of 338 to 88, and the bill calls for records to be retained by telecoms and forces the NSA to obtain court orders from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to gain access to them. It also requires the agency to use specific terms to narrow its access to only relevant records. The bill, however, isn't in the clear just yet. It now goes to the Senate for a vote. Civil liberties groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation and others are divided in their support of the bill. Many say it's better than nothing, but hope the Senate will add wording to strengthen protections before passage. EFF had supported the legislation until last week when a federal court of appeals ruled that the bulk collection of phone data is illegal. In that decision, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals found that the collection of Americans' phone metadata was never authorized by Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act as the intelligence intelligence community had insisted. The EFF has now said that the ruling should embolden the Senate to roll back the bill to a previous 2013 version that provides stronger reforms. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
Retail giant CVS is gearing up for floods of customers seeking the perfect meaningless piece of crap for their office gift swap. The company is making no secret that when it comes to wasting the obligatory $20 on a useless electronic dartboard or pretzel maker for someone you couldn't care less about, CVS is your best option. Our incredible selection of worthless shit is just the thing that nobody wants. We guarantee you'll find nothing personal or unique in our store. The company is offering massive discounts on otherwise unsellable items for holiday parties you don't even want to go to, like the $12 decorative lantern, which is expected to be a big hit with customers who grab the first thing they see when they walk in the store. I really wanted to get something that said I don't care about any of you people and I didn't put any effort into this. CBS also has Hanukkah gifts for co-workers who you think might be Jewish, like candles and those little plastic net bags full of chocolate money. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. 855 free or you can use Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Many times you'll sound a bit better if you use Skype. My name's Mark. And my name's Christopher Cantwell. From ChristopherCantwell.com, the now legendary blog after your uh, video of uh, you pulling a gun to defend yourself on the streets of Keene has gone viral uh, today. I mean, any video that isn't sort of sappy, funny, or, um, you know, cartoony that gets a half a million views, I think is fair to call viral. Oh, yeah, certainly. I mean, it got picked up by NH1, the, the um, you know, we're, I'm in the mainstream news locally in New Hampshire. So it's uh, it's definitely gotten around. I was in the NH1. I was in the union leader. I'm surprised the Keen Sentinel hasn't gotten in touch with me. I don't think those people like me very much. <laughs> Not a surprise. It's a long list, Chris. <laughs> Let's go to Mike. Calling in from uh, my hometown. Mike, calling from Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to talk about uh, the caller uh, going to go into the Coast Guard and looking for a way to uh, get money for college. Yeah, we talked name. to him I, I, last night and I think a couple of nights before that. Yeah. Um, well, basically, I think he said he wanted to go into political science as a major. Uh, yeah. I would highly strongly recommend doing that um that's what i majored in and um, i'm not working in politics what bar it's, are you uh, working uh, so, so, what, what, what bar are you working at um i'm not working at a bar i work on the railroad which has nothing to do with politics the but, railroad um yes oh <laughs> so uh yeah, kind of a different career path. There aren't many railroads uh, but, going through bradenton i guess the the railroad going from tropicana north no, I uh, I don't work locally. I work uh, out west and in the Midwest, and I just spend my off weeks in Florida. Gotcha. So I'm a transplant. But uh, I wanted to say, too, Mark, you were a little bit – I want to correct you about – you're talking about internships with some different liberty organizations. And uh, I ended up interning with the Koch brothers for the Koch Institute right out of college. And okay. basically you said something about those groups that are looking for – kids you know interested in that sort of thing you need to really be a student to intern at a lot of those organizations okay. you mentioned so i mean it's i just wanted to say that if that's his goal you know you kind of need i need to be in school for that they don't just take anybody that's not like a student that's got a lot of their requirements but um i don't know if you like i said if you don't go the political science route it's pretty much a worthless degree and you can work in politics without having that degree a lot of the people that work on these campaigns and make some money don't even have degrees and uh, so, and they're learning a heck of a lot more. Experience. I mean, you're talking about learning on the ground politics by working at these can campaigns. I had a friend who moved up. He was just, I think he was a bartender, and decided he moved up for the Free State Project. Thought that was a good idea. He started working for some campaigns, and now he's a mover in that uh, that sphere. It. I remember sitting with him and chit chatting. It hasn't been eight years since that happened, and. In that, in the course of that amount of time, he's become sought after in the political sphere. So, you know, it's basically just learning how to do it. This is sitting around political science. Well, I don't think achieves very much at all. 
we don't learn anything about actual campaigns really in, in those kind of classes anyways you get a lot of left-wing propaganda stuff and mm -hmm. i mean i i agree with your take on college in general it's pretty much not a good thing for most people uh you know probably 90 percent of people in college shouldn't be there a few fields that you need to do it for but you know my job on the railroad doesn't require me to have a degree and if i would have done that right out of school High school, I would be doing a lot better financially than I am now. What yeah. What um, is like political you know, so. science? In political science one hundred and one is what like it's uh, like how to offer people free stuff without scaring taxpayers or. Yeah, it's just like your government standard government class, and they go through the three branches of government, and you know they might have a couple. I think I did that in stories first or... grade. <laughs> well, you probably learned yeah, some yeah, terms. Uh, you know, you got you got to know your yeah, terms. I mean, Right, yeah, you get, uh, you know, four years that I did a lot of my, my were, uh, credit hours, a lot of it was just I did internship credits uh, with different campaigns and stuff like that. But I guess if you want an easy degree to, uh, to get a bachelor's in, you know, political science. But who is wants a, that? What do you want to go and pay for a bachelor's for? If somebody please enlighten me on that. Uh, you know, well, because you, know, you have these organizations and things that say uh, some of these political groups that, you know, you mentioned are they? That's what they want is they want people coming in to work for them in the think tank or whatever. You pretty much need a bachelor's degree to get hired in the think tank in do they, DC. Do they I offer any DC kind of scholarships and, for those kids? Uh, oh, sure, sure, yeah, they, yeah, they do for sure. Um, it's real competitive. I mean, a lot of these liberty organizations that have sprung up in the last five to ten years, uh, you know, out in DC, that the, 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 it's real competitive for these jobs, and they don't pay very much. I mean, I worked for Freedom nope, Works by. Uh, First, when I got out of college, I was a videographer for for a while, and I was paying a thousand dollars rent, renting out a two bedroom with a a third bedroom den in in uh, Virginia, right across the border from D.C. This is a twenty four hundred dollar month apartment. <laughs> well, anyways, you know, my first job was I was offered like thirty thousand or thirty five thousand dollars and to live in Washington D C and pay a thousand dollar a month rent. I mean it's just it's crazy what a lot of these kids that got this political dream do. They go out there and they get these low paying jobs and I mean I just got burned out with it. But to pay their you dues, know, I'm, I guess I'm happy what I'm doing now. You know, I mean <laughs> yeah. I think that the whole political process in so many ways is intended to ferret out those people that uh you know that, that in what their in what their opinion don't have it, and by that I mean people that basically have morals and uh, spines and all these other things. Thanks for right. the call, Mike. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's Appreciate just go it. and find all these people with no scruples at all who will just do ruthless, terrible things in order to gain us political power. It it seems like you have to be a very successful sociopath to reach uh, national office in the United States. Well, the good thing about that is the way that, uh, you know, children are being brought up these days in the public schools is making more and more of those people. So thank you for that. There you go. Let's go to Nathan calling in from Texas on Skype. Our username is lrn.fm if you want to call us there. And also our number is 855-450-FREE. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, Cantwell, do you know that your banner on YouTube still has a hole in the description? I do. I have to uh, remake that, but uh, I'm not in too terrible of a hurry to get rid of every trace of it. All right, I just thought I'd let you know. I thank you. I appreciate uh, it. So my topic was about uh, Stefan Molyneux, and since both you guys listened to his show, I thought uh, it'd be a good time to call in about it. Well, I can't There's say I've something... listened to Stefan Molyneux's show in, um, in some time. It's just that I... You know, I don't have the time to go. To, it's I listen to the competition and try to take ads. So if I'm listening to somebody, I'm listening <laughs> to the radio with the intent, the express intent to listen for advertisers and swipe them. And Stefan Molyneux doesn't have any of those. Right. And, I, and I'll tell you that I'm a few days behind, but go ahead. OK, well, this is something about something that he's been talking about for a long time, but he's never really defined or given a name or, or been specific about, and it just hit me today exactly what it is that he believes. Uh, he believes the statement that you can't cheat an honest man. And uh, I've, I've come to this conclusion after listening to him talk about employment and relationship opportunities. And in both of those areas, employment and personal relationships, he puts forward the line that if you're honest, then you can't really be taken advantage of or scammed or um, 
you know, cheated basically on a long-term basis. And, uh, you know, for an analogy, you might think of the uh, the bar scene on Better Call Saul where they're running the uh, half the dollar Kennedy coin scam. The whole scam, like where there's a buyer and a seller and a mark, the whole scam relies on the mark being greedy. Like if the mark wasn't greedy Most and trying scams to sort do. of make it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But greed and, uh, isn't in at, and of itself inherently bad. Wishing to make money, like for instance, somebody who says, I have a uh, an investment scheme that will pay something like 10% a year. Um, the, the way that Bernie Madoff did. So people that uh, you know had their money invested with Bernie Madoff, they had no particular reason not to do that. Nathan, let me um, stick around. Yeah, yeah, I want to uh, address this okay. a bit more. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Your thoughts? Can you cheat an honest man or woman? Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Username on Skype is LRN.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty three. Free Talk Live. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live. And they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me. Mark Edge at marketfreetalklive.com and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad, we'll produce it for you. Buy 230 second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact i believe like i said uh, a lot of where i am now is due to listening to free talk live you changed my mind on some very important issues years ago to random people tuning in on the radio i was kind of stuck in the left right paradigm i heard your show by chance on a saturday night from there i went on joined the free state project and become an amplifier so i mean that's really the reason why i amp is uh because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. If you go online, you need protection. Because the fact is, your internet service provider is saving all your surfing history. Criminals are trying to uh, sniff out your Wi-Fi packets, see what you're doing online, get your banking information, steal your identity. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet. And all your metadata is being stored by the NSA. Somebody might even leak your nude photos. They might do just that. Um, you can solve it with ProXPN. You download their app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or even Linux, and you connect to the Internet, and you're protected from all that stuff. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50. You'll get 50% off of an annual account. It's like 5 bucks a month um, by using FTL50, and you'll get the savings for the lifetime of the account no matter which premium account you go with. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world to access, the ability to privately torrent. You can get past regionally blocked websites, and this is, and even the ones that like, you know, at work and things like that. This is important. ProXPN do, uh, does not keep records of your online habits. You get all that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL coupon code, promo code FTL50. For a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go back to Nathan. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. All right. So I was explaining about uh, this revelation or I guess insight that I came to while I was listening to a different podcast on LRN about something that Molyneux uh, says or advocates. Um, Stefan, Molyneux never really from, made... Stefan Molyneux from Free Domain Stephon Radio. Stefan Molyneux from Free Domain Radio. And... Um, I guess the problem I have with it, well, I guess before I uh, before I get into that, uh, what the saying is that you can't cheat an honest man. And I have two examples that I just come pop, you know, come off the top of my head. Um, for employment, I think he cited the uh, that movie Office Space with uh, remember the guy who kept wanting Jennifer Aniston to wear flair to attract the customers or whatnot. I think his argument there was, well, you kind of have to be a a bad employee because if you were a good employee, you would recognize that you have a bad boss who thinks that, you know, forcing his employees to wear stickers is going to bring in more business or um, create a better environment or, or something to that effect. Um, and Molyneux also did a video on how to get hired. Um, that might have some more examples in it, but I'm kind of blanking on that. He, he really advocates it more with the personal relationships, you know, um, like I do uh, wonder partners. about this. Um, I had no intention of getting married in my life. Uh, I just didn't see any particular reason to do that. And I met a really great woman who in many ways matched me, uh, you know, ma matched my strengths and weaknesses in, in a way that was, uh, you know, worked for me. And so I decided to give the marriage thing a shot. Ten years later, okay, we're still we're still managing to plug along uh, for better or for worse. Um, I I do wonder about people who are in relationships. You, like you hear about these horrible breakups. I know just about every woman with whom I've broken up on Facebook. You know, we're friends or whatever. And you know, they don't want to see me dead. Uh, they may have been more or less happy when with uh, with me after we broke up, but you know, at this point, uh, you know, it's it's fine. Um, so I kind of wonder to myself: these terrible breakups with these people that do these horrible things. Didn't you see this coming? Yeah, I mean, I I I will. 
I don't like the phrase "you can't cheat an honest man" because honest men do get cheated. But of course, if you're if you're involved in all sorts of terrible dysfunctional things, you're going to have terrible dysfunctional relationships, and terrible dysfunctional things are going to happen to you. And you know, I've got a lot of dysfunction in my life. I had a, a woman over my house not so long ago, and I and I said, "Look, your life is a cesspool of dysfunction." And she's like, "How do you know that?" And I was like, "Because you're here," you know. <laughs> and she she thought that that was rather <laughs> funny, um, but. You know, I don't, I don't, I, it, honest people do get cheated. They get screwed over and obviously they get taken advantage of, but it doesn't tend to work out for very long because when they realize they're being tra- treated badly, they'll usually walk away, I would think. Yeah, the uh, the podcast that gave me the idea um, actually discussed this a little bit. And uh, the points were mentioned that, that, you know, if you're desperate, you know, that, that, could, that could be one possibility. Or if you're just naive, if you just, you know, don't know a lot about the world. I mean, the thing is that those two things are temporary conditions is the thing. So if you're if you're repeatedly being cheated over and over in the course of some 15 year long relationship, then it does. It, the saying does seem to ring true. But uh just getting back to what Mark said, um, that kind of reminded me of the um, that governor candidate here in Texas, uh, Wendy Davis. Um, I seem to remember there was something about she married this rich lawyer guy. He put her way through school, and then she, uh, as soon as he was done paying her loan, she dumped him and the kids and decided to go do her political career or whatnot. Yeah, I've heard that. And story. I remember thinking the same. Yeah, I remember thinking the same thing. Like, like on some level. You know, you're this rich lawyer who's married this young girl from a trailer park. On some level, you know, who's very beautiful. You have to real. On some level, it seems like you have to realize what's going on here, right? That that she's with you because you're paying her school loans or whatnot. But you, you don't get that impression. They all, they always act shocked. They always act surprised. Like you know, how could this happen to me? Kind of a thing. And that's what Molyneux is sort of. I notice he really drives home a lot. Like he, uh, like in his book, he talks about how you're supposed to be honest all the time. And if you're honest, it's like a like a force field or something that like clears away the scammers and the, and the grifters from trying to take advantage of you, so to speak. I think it would probably go further than just being honest. I've I've over the, the last many years, I've been entirely too honest, and that doesn't work out for me very frequently. Uh, but. Uh, I would say that you know, in your heart. trying to work out, you know, certain troubles in your life will then, you know, sort of people, p- dysfunctional people recognize dysfunction and hurt people, hurt people, right? They 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 seek these things out. So if you if you are involved with, you know, a, a really damaged woman, it's probably because you know you you found that attractive in some way. I like what he's been going into with the whole, you know, RK reproductive strategies and you know sort of sort of how that works i have this terrible habit of picking these ridiculously damaged women because i have a i i have a pretty good bet that they'll sleep with me right <laughs> and it's a bad bad bet <laughs> yeah well, well no it's it's a, it's a good, good bet, bet that they'll sleep a- with me but it's a losing investment in the long run because it goes horribly bad because i i try, I try to i i try to turn a, a woman into a housewife who ain't fit to be one and i have really terrible outcomes as a result well, maybe you could get some pointers if you watch Streetcar Named Desire. He seems to love that movie a lot. So. <laughs> I'll have to um, check that one out. <laughs> thanks for the call, Nathan. Appreciate it. Okay. 855 free It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and uh, talk about whatever's on your mind. Let's go to Tom calling in from Hudson. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, yeah, there's these stories going around on the news. One of them in North Carolina, another one, a bunch of people in Minnesota who have been busted for trying to go over to Asia to join the Islamic State. And there's some issues about entrapment going on here. But, you know, some of these people might qualify for America's dumbest criminals. Like, check this out, okay? I mean, they got a bone to pick with the United States government because of its history of unjust wars in the Middle East and stuff. So... They're going to go to war with the United States. All right. Okay. Check this out. Hold on just a second. Dump them. Yep. Hold on. I want to hear this. All right. 855 450 3733. It's 855 450 free here on Free Talk Live. Find out what the world's dumbest criminals uh, trying to go over the Middle East are. Free Talk Live. (laughs) 
You've heard them on Alex Jones. You've seen them on Ancient Aliens. Now come see them live at Contact in the Desert 2015 in Joshua Tree this May. Experience four full days of science-centered lectures, workshops, intensives, and fieldwork on ancient astronauts, extraterrestrial intelligence, human origins, crop circles, contact experiences, UFO sightings, and more. Meet Chariots of the Gods author Eric Von Daniken, Ancient Aliens host Giorgio A. Sokolos, New York Times best-selling author David Wilcock, Dead Dog. Doctors Don't Lie author Dr. Joel Wallach, astronauts Edgar Mitchell and Story Musgrave, Earth Files publisher Linda Moulton Howe, author Jim Mars, and many of the world's most respected researchers and scientists exploring answers to one of the greatest questions of all time. More speakers, more panels, more things to do. Join us at the Joshua Tree Retreat Center, which has a long history of sightings and contact experiences. For advanced tickets and conference schedule, go to contactinthedesert.com. That is contactinthedesert.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Cantwell. 855-450-FREE. Do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. That uh, extra click uh, to get to Amazon or Walmart or uh, Newegg, that extra click really makes a difference for us. It uh, you know, we get a little spiff off of your purchase and you get the same prices and the same great service you normally get. 
So it's shop.freetalklive.com. Let's go back to Tom calling in from Hudson, New Hampshire. Tom, you were saying that uh, there was some uh, people trying to go over to fight for ISIS and that they did it in a very silly manner. Is that right? Uh, well, what they're trying to do is not, I mean, they could uh, qualify for America's dumbest criminals. See, first, they do have a bone to pick with the federal government. I mean, the, the war in Iraq, let's face it, was so Vice President Cheney's friends at Halliburton could make money off the oil, and a million Iraqis were killed. And Well, the Islamic State calls it a war against Muslims. It was actually a war for oil, but hey, it's so a million people got killed. So they're going to fight back against the United States. They're going to leave their own firearms at home and go to an airport that's crawling with local cops, customs and border protection agents on lunch break, and they're going to go through a security checkpoint staffed with TSA federal uh, child molesters and then go get on a plane and go to Asia to fight against the United States by going out and killing innocent Yazidis and Shiites. They're not wrapped too tight. Agreed. And it yeah, doesn't sound yeah, very smart. They don't sound wrapped very tight <laughs> at all. Thanks for the call, Tom. <laughs> Let's go to Richard. I'm not sure where Richard's calling in from, but I know he's calling in on Skype. Richard, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. What's on your mind? Um, I, I'm uh, Actually, I'm from New Hampshire. I'm in New Jersey right now. But uh, I was calling because uh, I was curious as to how – the people that Chris would, had to uh, respond to, how did they react when they saw you um, shaking the hand of the cop and getting your gun back and leaving? Uh, once, right. let's let's reference this real quick. Um, so uh, Christopher Cantwell was on the streets of uh, Keene, New Hampshire, here uh, just a couple of days ago, and Saturday night. Yeah, there was a. Uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning, there's some shirtless people screaming their heads off. It sounds like some women are in danger. You go, you begin filming, you're heading towards the noise. Turns out, no, well, what a surprise. It's basically a domestic dispute. And uh, the not only do the men not want you filming, but the women don't want you filming either. You're like, basically, I'm just trying to make sure nobody's getting hurt. You're sort of backing away. They charge at you like a bunch of nuts. Um, and... Uh, you attempt to run away at some point or another. You finally, you know, get tired of running because you know they're going to catch you. Turn around, pull the gun on the guy, and say, "I am not going to have a fist fight with you, stupid." Um, does that sound about right? Yeah, I'm not getting a fist fight with you, stupid. I got a gun on my hip, and then there's a lot of things I can't say on the radio. Yeah. Uh, and then the police show up, and uh, and the police were very courteous and professional with me. And in any case, so uh, the, to answer your question, I was completely uninterested in what they were doing as soon as they ceased to be a threat to my safety. I was completely concerned with the police because I was I was certain I was about to die when the police got there. And then once the police made me sure that I wasn't going to die, then I was certain that I was going to be taken into custody. And then I was like, wow, I have my gun and my cell phone and I'm free to go. So I was I was completely uninterested in the drunk idiots who I had, uh, I don't know if they were drunk, they were crazy. And, you know, alcohol 3 a.m. stands to reason, right? Yep. Uh, so if you're not wearing your shirt off and you're on Main Street, you're not wearing your shirt, you're on Main Street, you're screaming your head off next to people's homes. Um, hmm, okay, alcohol probably a factor. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I don't. I really don't have any idea what their uh, what their reaction to me shaking the hands of police officers were. Um, I don't know the answer to the question. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, I was just curious because it, it from what I could hear in the video. I mean, that girl freaked out when she saw the gun. Yeah, and that'll happen. Saying, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so she, it sounds like the, at least she learned something. And I'm, I'm just kind of hoping that maybe the, this in the future makes them rethink going out and violently assaulting people. I, I hope so it, it makes them think twice, too. But these these guys don't look like fast learners to me, unfortunately. <laughs> In this yeah, town, um, in this town, the you know sad, the activists have a bad name, whether they deserve it or not. In many cases, the activists are equated with people who choose to film, uh, period, in, in front, really not film, record, video record, um, and so. I think that in the activists are, in many cases, uh, thank you for the call, Richard. Do appreciate it. Yeah, no I got a little background noise there. The activists are equated with um, pacifists. People are going to do. Nothing. Right. So you'll often find that those that uh, that support the ideas of using violence 
support them most firmly against people who uh, are claim to be pacifists. Yeah. Whether whatever you think about the pacifist philosophy, th- you know, many times people who advocate for the ideas of using violence will advocate for the most strongly against pacifists. So what you'll see is the stupid drunk thugs um, with the, you know, the, the worst thinkers of society saying, I'll fix them by pounding some sense into them. And, you know, they've attempted to do this on multiple occasions. Um, this appears to be the first time they've run up on somebody who had a gun. Many free staters are big advocates of guns, and uh, but most of them don't do activism. Most of the gun advocates don't particularly do activism right you've got in 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 me you've got the the gun rights advocate and the uh and the activist in one and so you look i'm i'm going to find myself in dangerous situations sometimes dealing with crazy stupid people but if they attack me i will stop them one way or the other yeah you I, you have every right to uh, defend yourself most people if they're critiquing you they're critiquing you getting involved at all but Somebody, you know, look, ladies and gentlemen who say this about me, and it's mostly it's mostly people who would have hated me no matter what I did. It seems like it. But, you know, the, the thing the thing is, somebody's got to uh, to do these things, right? I, I really think that uh, we need uh, to live in a society that does not tolerate victimization, whether it's from police or anybody else. And one good way to do that is to pull out the camera. And if you don't like the camera and you want to use violence against a cameraman, I come with a gun, too. Very good. Let's go to Jeremy calling in from, looks like, Saratoga. Jeremy, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi. Um, so I was just sitting on my couch, and I got this uh, random text from a random individual. It turns out it's a Democratic Albany County legislator. Okay. And she's trying to reach the sheriff. And uh, so I kind of I was hoping you guys could help me interpret what this text sounds like. So a Democratic what is trying to reach the sheriff? Uh, Albany County is a county. Uh, yep. but, okay. Um, and what is York, she? And uh, she, she's What's a legislator. Legislator. Current or running for the oh. office? Current. Okay. What's the text say? All right. Text says. How do you know it's a, a legislator? But just uh, out of curiosity, I don't want a text from just sort of random I, individual. If they're a. She, but she said her name and uh, like she signed the text message. And you Googled it. And the um, she also. Yeah, and then I Googled it, and I found her Facebook, and then it actually matched the phone number that was posted on the uh, government website. All right, lay it on me. If this is news, I'll take it. So, starts off, Craig, would you mind terribly sending me the photos you took of me at the labor breakfast? I would greatly appreciate it. Best, Allie. Yes. I feel like I always ask you for stuff and not vice versa. Whatever I can do for you, for example, in my last election, I won all districts in Manan's most heavily concentrated Democratic area and colony. If you want to walk or have me pay for a local piece, you got it. Not that you need it. For both you and Danny, I should say. And that's all I got so far. Hmm. I guess it sounds like a little back scratching uh, going on, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure that there's... I'm I'm not certain that I've got uh, I'm not certain that I'm hearing any technically impropriety here though right like if if she's going to offer to uh, you know donate something or to uh, to stunt stump for him you know these things will happen right yeah I guess it makes some yeah, sense yeah right but it's uh it must yeah. be very interesting to get a text like this yeah you should yeah, totally call her up or reply with a picture <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of how to proceed. <laughs> I'd just let to see how it goes. Thanks for the call, Joe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 855-450 free free talk live. Final segment coming up 855-450-3733. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? 
It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic any time. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We're you're having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30 second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150 plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge, at marketfreetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad, we'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30 second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. It's uh, Mark with you. And Cantwell. Please uh, check out our amplifier program over at amp.freetalklive.com. What it is is, well, people who believe in the ideas of liberty, who help us to get Free Talk Live on more radio stations, into more ears through podcast, in a variety of ways. If you believe in the ideas of liberty and you believe the Free Talk Live is a good purveyor of them, the AMP program is for you. Amp.freetalklive.com. Cantwell. Something I really would rather not talk about, but I got to, you know, it's out there and it's a big deal in the Liberty community today. What I've come to call Boobgate. <laughs> yeah, Boobgate. I got caught up in a, an incident that uh, apparently somebody leaked some uh, some uh, revealing photos of an activist that uh, goes by the name of Josie Wales. Now, you, this was a roommate of yours for a period of time. Right. She was a roommate of mine. She was a tenant of mine, really. I, I was renting a room to her in a house that I had a lease on. And, you know, sort of some people have assumed that I had a sexual relationship with her because she was living in my house, right? Right. 
And that was not the case at it all. It does happen, right? Men and women in the same house sometimes. Yeah. It, that a, a lot of people assumed it. You know, I've, I've stated repeatedly that I never had any, you know, sexual relationship with her at all. I did become infatuated with her while she was in the house. She was a terrible distraction to me. And it was, a, <laughs> it was, a, and it was kind of a mess. She's an attractive woman. There's yeah. No and so, uh, you know, but I'm really glad that I didn't get involved with her, frankly. I, I don't have a high opinion of the woman today. And so she, uh, she uh, did eventually leave. She went back to Philadelphia. And now some uh, some uh, uh, revealing photos of her chest have been released onto the internet, and somehow people started assuming that I was involved in that in some way. That I had apparently leaked uh, uh, nude photos of Josie Wales. I did not do this, and there is absolutely no reason to ex- to believe that I did. There's not a single post by my name. I have a, I have a high-profile libertarian blog, and I am a traffic whore. If I wanted to leak photos of somebody, I put it on page one, and I get paid for it. It's fundamentally ridiculous to think that I'm sneaking around putting, you know, uh, racy photos out there. I have received the photo, okay? I got it during the show last night. I didn't even mention it to you and Ian. I just closed the message and did nothing with it. And you know what? I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, people are out there looking for it. I don't recommend that you do. Josie looks like a really attractive girl when she's got that magic bra stuffing those things up against her tiny little neck. But when she's laid out on the mattress and they're falling off the side like a half full bag of dirty laundry, it's not appealing at all. I gotta say that uh, (laughs) Josie's an an attractive woman and, uh, you know, having seen these these pictures, I, I, I don't, I disagree with your assessment. However, that's your assessment, and you can have it. Um, I, I think that it's colored by your um, dissatisfaction with your time as her as your roommate. I know. You know what? I left her alone when she left the house. That woman has been attacking me over and over and over again. And when the other guy that she did sleep with leaked the picture, she put my name in it just to crap on my name. That's the only reason that my name got inserted to it. And of course it happens so that people can start calling me a misogynist, you know, two days after I've been labeled a white knight social justice warrior for coming to the defense of women on Main Street in Keene. And this is the, the, it's the most ridiculous thing that I go through in this world is one day I'm a woman hating misogynist and the next day I'm a white knight social justice warrior because, uh, you know, I think, you know, coming to the defense of women when, you know, they're actually being harmed is a good thing. But, uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't be relieving them of all the responsibility for everything they do in society. So um, a lot of people have uh, said, you know, like the other side of this appears to be if you don't want your picture leaked, don't take the picture. I think that's really good advice. I think it's good advice as a uh, as a sort of protection But I I can say that I I don't think this picture should have been leaked. I just don't. um... I wouldn't be surprised if she put it out there herself just to draw attention to her name again. Ever since she stopped making videos with Larkin Rose, nobody cares what she's doing. Well, it does seem like um, she has a very active Facebook page. I can say that much. (laughs) Um, But it does seem like uh, she uh, it it looked like a selfie from what I was uh, seeing of the picture. I don't know. Um, have you ever been uh, gotten pictures like this in the past of other people? Yeah, I got I got pictures of Cassandra Fairbanks not too long ago too, and I did nothing with them either. And I hate that woman. She's a race pimp psychopath, and I don't want anything to do with her. I'd love to go give her a hard time, but leaking just putting dirty photos of girls on the internet is not what I do. Yeah, so I mean, apparently um, you are, uh, as your website says, an a hole, but not that kind of a hole. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm not even saying that my a holishness doesn't rise to that level. I'm just saying I'm a different type, right? And that's not what that's not what I do. You know, I've I've done some you know movement gossip stuff on my website, but I've never leaked personal information about people or 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 revealing photos or anything like that. And I've never said anything about anybody that wasn't true. So all you people who want to go out there and try to demonize me for something that I did not do, that you have no evidence that I did go screw yourselves, your evil, lying um, FCC people. <laughs> you know, I've I, I, I got to say that this is it. It's got to feel bad uh, for to have your your picture leaked like this. Um, you know, this probably I don't I don't believe that this is something that she did um, on her own. I believe that this was uh, it looks like. An ex-boyfriend leaked it, um, who has been on this show before, and that it might have gotten leaked further from from there. And it's uh, it's sad, as I understand, he's made an apology for it. Other people in the uh, other parties have not made apologies in it. I, um, but I I can imagine this upsets her. 
However, I I just don't. She's loving it. I'm. I. I don't care if she's even if if even if she wasn't involved in it. She's loving it. There's no question in my mind that girl just anything for the attention. I swear. Hmm. Well, I don't know. When I put out when I said put my te- my uh, status update about the gun incident, I said, hey, I had to pull my gun out on somebody. P- Keen PD has cleared me. I'm okay. I'm home. I'm safe. This woman within 20 minutes comes out and says, oh well, he's probably cutting up the video to make himself look like the good guy and and, and coordinate with his cronies without any information whatsoever. This woman just slanders me on Facebook without a second's thought about it, and I can't believe just the, just the 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 veracity and i never did anything to her she's a lying scumbag hmm. well why do you think it is that she's uh, so up- upset with you i mean you know i think was- it's factional she's running around with cassandra and these other leftists stirring up race riots in in, in all these places hmm. well there you go screaming about rape culture and the patriarchy like a bunch of lunatics I think that the best ad- advice is, is um, you know, don't take the picture if you don't want it leaked. But Especially uh, if you're a public figure. Look, I sent out a couple of um, uh, genitalia photos when I when I was, like, just on dating sites and I was a nobody. Then I ran for Congress, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. <laughs> well, hopefully those don't get shared, right? You know, or at least you go get yourself a Snapchat or something like that. Why am I got, you know, you're sending dirty pictures of yourself through things that are being, like, stored through third-party mediums. You're a lunatic. I have no res- I have no sympathy for these people, and yeah, maybe it's it's a it's a, it's a breach of trust if you give it to somebody that you trust, and then they go give it to somebody else. There's a breach of trust there, no question about it. But I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. All this revenge porn, you know, we're gonna stop this. Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm sorry, ladies. If you don't want people to see your boobs, then stop taking pictures of them and putting them on the internet because the internet's kind of a big place, and things have a habit of getting around. I um, have had pictures like this that we're talking about, and I, I will admit to having shown them to people that perhaps the, uh, the, the person who took the picture wouldn't have liked to have seen it. I haven't done the, uh, the send it around thing, but I've done the show it thing, and uh, it's, it's, it's tacky. Um, there's no doubt about it, uh, but I don't think that once you give it out, you really, you know, the responsibility, it's difficult, right? When you say... This is a secret, and then, but I'm going to tell you. Well, then you tell somebody a secret. Shouldn't they be able to tell it to somebody too? You got to tell it to one person. Shouldn't they get to tell it to one person too? Especially if there's no sort of contract in place. Um, well, right. You know, and this is this is the thing. I it's mean, implicit. She, I would say the contract. You know, she, she's angry with me because she slept with some guy while she was over at the house, and then everybody found out about it, and and she blames me for this because she told me about it, and then she's uh, and and I'm I like, do you think? Out. Do you think that maybe the guy that just slept with might have bragged to all his friends that he that he had sex with the big breasted girl, you know, who who lived with the guy who was screwing his wife was the situation, and and this whole thing became this big mess, and she's all angry with me and i'm like you know i don't i'm not going out and spewing your business to everybody but uh if everybody already knows about it then you know maybe uh you you look at somebody else who might have known about it well sounds like your business is all over the place now yeah it sure is go ahead screw around lady (laughs) i don't even know what to say about it uh you know i've i've I feel bad for everybody involved. It seems like if we're going to, uh, if activists are going to disagree with each other, they should disagree based on principle, not on uh, stories that go one way or the other, or the rumors and and all that stuff. But eh, I guess that's how people are when people get together. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, you get enough people uh, with enough strong opinions together, and personalities get to clashing. There you go. Now you all know about Boobgate. Yeah, by the way, I, I think I get deserve credit for that one. I. Uh, at least I get, came up with it uniquely if no one else came up with the same Hashtag thing. Boobgate on Twitter. Hashtag Boobgate or Hashtag Boobgate 2015. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's been Mark with you. And Cantwell. Freetalklive.com. Nothing you do or say will ever reach the lofty heights attained by the following news summary. This is The Onion Week in Review. Facing increased market pressure and a shrinking bottom line, media company Star Trove was forced to lay off dozens of unskilled bloggers this week. Sources confirmed that before being dismissed, many of the bloggers had been with the company for months, regularly performing menial tasks such as describing celebrity outfits and composing quizzes about Disney characters. I mean, I've been with this company for almost a year. It wasn't the most rewarding job, and I didn't have health insurance, but... It paid the bills. I'm already 25 years old. I just don't know where to go from here. 
In other news, a six-day visit to a rural African village completely changes a woman's Facebook profile picture. A new dating website helps plus-size Jewish plane crash survivors find love. And a kid figures he'll go down the slide 36 more times and then call it a day. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, May 14th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,218 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. Antiwar.com reports, remember how the Afghan war ended at the end of 2014 only for NATO to announce the resolution support mission, which was keeping occupation forces and by extension, the war through the end of 2016? Yesterday, without much fanfare, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg announced that NATO had decided to stay in Afghanistan beyond 2016 and that this will have a military compact. Unlike other NATO operations in Afghanistan, which had some sort of deadline attached to them to eventually break, the latest announcement does not include any timeline at all, suggesting the occupation, even rhetorically, is open-ended. This isn't entirely surprising, with the U.S. already having a formal deal to keep troops in Afghanistan through 2024 and beyond, which seems to ensure that both the U.S. and NATO troops will be in Afghanistan for many years to come. The announcement is likely to be a huge blow to Afghan peace talks, as the Taliban had conditioned any talks on the withdrawal of foreign forces, and NATO seems to be settling in for a long stay. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports Nebraska has become the 16th state affected by the ongoing avian flu out and officials announced on Tuesday it would kill 1.7 million chickens. The H5N2 avian influenza spread to an egg farm in Dixon County where chickens will be quarantined and euthanized with the oversight of trained veterinarians. Nebraska Agricultural Department Director Greg Ebach told NBC News, Unfortunately, Nebraska has joined a long list of states currently dealing with the highly pathogenic avian influenza. The goal is to quarantine the flock and attempt to control and contain the virus as quickly as possible. Officials are urging farmers in the surrounding area of northeast Nebraska to follow proper biosecurity procedures. Most egg-laying operations in the state occur in the northeast, and Nebraska has nearly 10 billion egg-laying chickens, ranking 10th among states in egg production. More than 32 million birds have been affected by the virus since December. Iowa, the top producing state in the country, recently became the third in the nation to declare a state of emergency as a result of the fast-spreading avian flu, joining Minnesota and Wisconsin. The highly pathogenic H5N2 bird flu has devastated dozens of farms across the U.S. However, health experts do warn that it is not contagious to humans. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Wired reports in a landslide move yesterday, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to pass the USA Freedom Act. The bill passed overwhelmingly by a vote of 338 to 88, and the bill calls for records to be retained by telecoms and forces the NSA to obtain court orders from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to gain access to them. It also requires the agency to use specific